Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Caleb. Fellas! 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 Welcome to episode 119. Uh, very special episode. Uh, we have... A little rebuttal, a little redemption episode coming up. Yeah. Obviously, uh, post-record here, we are a lot more sober than the last time you saw us start out here. No Quentin Tarantino shenanigans here. But a few weeks back, we uh, reviewed the Concealed Carry, debuted uh, Father Caleb. Great uh, origin story there, his villain arc. But uh, (laughs) guys, we got Omar... From Fratello Cigars, and then we also have Jennifer True, who good sport about a lot of things. I got to give her credit. You know, she took our uh, our quote unquote bullying in stride. <laughs> she she seemed a little uh, like we treated her very badly in the beginning, and I was like, uh, I don't think so. I think uh, you're a good sport about things. Come on, you, you could take some ball busting. You're you're in a predominantly male dominated industry, and I, I I feel like you could handle it. Oh, she threw it right back. She at threw it right back at us. You know what? We bust each other's balls. We could bust lady nuts too. It's all part of the industry. Everyone's fair game. Everyone's nuts get busted. Yeah, lady nuts, man nuts, they all get busted. Well, okay. I thought it was really funny. Um. Obviously, we had a great conversation with Omar. We had a great conversation with Jennifer. So you know, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we 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 had a really good time reviewing uh, a special cigar. I don't know if you want to touch on it, Geo. Um, well, I think this is a nice little segue, Jerry, that you drew up for me there. Uh, this portion of our show is brought to you by our sponsors, Crownheads. John just released, you know, that Blood Medicine twenty twenty four. I bought a box. Do you guys buy? No, that's okay. No, know. no, I'm gonna buy some of yours off of you. Correct. You know, hey, we. I couldn't find a retailer or local that had them. Yeah. Yet, I had to go to an online source. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to that. Uh, definitely an exciting release for me. I like the event and series that they did, and this is a bigger size, so I'm curious to see how it smokes. Uh, as always, they got their regular lines, the Mil Diaz. Their Maduros are coming back. I know John was uh, talking to us about. Exciting to get that second run of those out. Uh, and, you know, they have that Lavaretta coming strong still. Their uh, Imperio series, Jericho Hill. Did he say he was doing a four kicks this year? I can't remember. I didn't see if there was a, uh, you're talking about a mule kick. Yeah. The mule kick. Yes. yes. Um, he said he, they were kind of on the fence about it. Last yeah. that I spoke to him on, and, the, on the topic. And then obviously we know Las Cale's coming out soon. Yeah, so I cannot it. fucking wait for Las Cale. Next month. Usually. Let's go. But with that being said, so Omar, after watching the episode, enjoyed it, and gave us an exclusive here at Down to Earth. We are smoking the next rendition of Conceal Carry, the Detroit River. Now, these were limited, I think she said, small batches right around like 900 to 1,000 cigars. They're going to come in similar containers to this. Unfortunately, we probably should have asked this. We didn't get anything on the pricing of it or anything like that. So I try to have that for you guys. I don't understand. I think the pricing on the Detroit River is going to be very similar to the 18th Amendment, which I think was right around like that ten, eleven dollar mark. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, what else was it here that they mentioned? Uh, size wise, did you remember? They didn't even talk about it. Yeah, we didn't really <laughs> touch most. of No, them. we have them. We yeah. we got sent a whole shit ton of them and uh, never even asked. Yeah, we never came up. That, that's not what this was about. Does it feel like uh, five or six inches in your hand, Jerry? Let's see. How do you think? <laughs> Don't squeeze it like that, my guy. Take it easy. This is a family show. Uh, <laughs> you're ridiculous. <laughs> You'll squeeze it that day, dude. Well, we know how uh, you would figure it out. No, I'd be, I'd be a lot gentler. This is five inches. All right. So All right. is this like a true right. Robusto, you think? <laughs> like, I think this is like a thicker Robusto. This is probably 5x50 or 5x52. Yeah. That's my guess. But I'm we no. definitely should have definitely asked these questions here and now. Here. That is not what this show was about. This show was about redemption. Yeah. With down, with down to herf friendship. and in the industry. About friendship, too. Yeah. And yes. friendship. 
they addressed some uh, controversy cigar- regarding the concealed carry, too. So that's going to be a fun one, one part of that. Interview. But they did also bring some light to the situation. So that was nice to see them kind of explain things and obviously make it a little simpler and a little less controversial. Yeah. I, I was definitely uh, interested in that. And uh, I think you guys will appreciate Omar. He was definitely, uh, he came on uh, and had no problem addressing anything that was brought up previously. And definitely I'm, I'm happy that that worked out because I feel like we have a good relationship with them now and we'll be able to try more of their stuff in the future. I agree to that. Uh, that being said, obviously, we'll get right into this interview with them. Um Omar and Jennifer. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, 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 no. We can't do that yet. Not yet. Because Caleb has to tell you what we paired our cigar with today. I always forget this because I feel like the whiskey gets put on the back burner sometimes. But Caleb, what did we pair this with? All right. Today we have Blackened Rye the Lightning 2024 edition. This is a blend of straight rye whiskeys, double cast finished in Madria and rum cast, non-chill filtered. This is a 92 proofer right here. It is by the Sweet Amber Distilling Company. It is a... It's undisclosed, but it is from Kentucky Distilleries. Release date has been going since 2022, uh, 92 proof. The age is undisclosed, but uh, it's estimated between five and eight years. And then it's been finished in an additional two to 14 weeks in each cast type. The mash bill is also undisclosed. you got this light amber color, very light to it. Um, price is about $70.99 at stores. Uh, obviously, Blackened is the metal band Metallica. Uh, it's been started with chemical engineer, distill and blender Dave Pickerel, but he passed away in 2019. So the former head of Stranahan's, Rob Dietrich, has taken over the role as Blacken's master distiller. Ride the lightning. This is something that we talked about in a new segment a couple of weeks back. So very exciting that we get to drink it on the show after talking about it recently. I saw it. And I was like, let's just buy it. Let's get it. You know me. I love the rise. We've got a rum cast finish with the Madri- Mad- Madria Madura. Actually tasted really good. Very light. 92 proof. This thing drank so easy. What do you guys think about it? I actually really liked it a lot. Yeah, it was very good, and I don't say that a lot about rice. Dude, you could smell like the rum cast on it. Very rummy smell. It's like vanilla. A little spice, but like you get overpoweringly of rum. Like It smells of rum. It made a very good pairing with the cigar. So went well. I was super excited to smoke the cigar. I was super excited for the episode. So uh, as always, I feel like the the whiskey always takes like a little bit of a backseat, and I I hate that because we do drink some really good stuff on the show. Yeah, they say this barrel is uh this bottle, this barrel is very comparable to Barrel Seagrass, uh, the barrel company that we we did once before on the show. We did a batch like thirty two, so they say very comparable to the Seagrass, which I believe is a rye as well with some rum cast finish. So if you guys are in the market for some rye finished in some rum cast go ahead grab the blackened and uh see how it compares to others all right that being said uh let's get right into that interview with omar and jennifer all right guys we are here with omar founder of fratello cigars and vp of marketing jennifer true guys how's it going welcome to down to her after a uh interesting thank you for the invite no problem (laughs) Thank you. Happy to be here. We, we got bullied the last time, so we're ready to. We're ready. We're ready. Baby. Bring we're it. Ready. But you know what? We still like the cigars. They were still a great smoke. So we were definitely. You had us with the flavor and everything that came out of it. So you, it did get a good. So that means we did our jobs. We did our jobs. Right. <laughs> it was a great cigar. What, what can I say? I liked it a lot. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Also appreciate the hospitality and the nice package you guys sent. Appreciate that. Looking forward to this. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. <laughs> we brought Father Caleb for you there, Omar. <laughs> Where is he? I can't see him. Oh, I only see, see four it. things here. So click the Caleb screen. It might, yeah. It'll, it'll pull it up. it up for you. Well, there you are. <laughs> there you are. The new and improved Father Caleb. We uh, hit up our wardrobe station. Father Caleb. We got, we got some I new, see you. We got some new threads. Some new duds. The nuns were going crazy when they saw me in this thing. <laughs> Church was going up on a Saturday, man. Jennifer, you ready for this? Okay, I've been I've been working I've been on this for thirty minutes with these guys. We're good. 
I'm sorry. I'm I did the vibe. I have. We had the vibe check. I think we're okay. I actually started to explain things a little bit. Just to we're gonna have fun. The Good. A little bit. <laughs> so, first thing we want to get dive into. Um, what are you thinking, Gio? What route will we want to take here, bud? Well, I mean, I say we start with the elephant in the room here. Okay. Uh, so, what the hell is that? Okay. All right. But uh, so Jennifer, we were talking about this a little bit here. You felt a little bullied here by uh, our <laughs> co-host Jerry. So, oh, did she specifically say me? Probably. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I have an ally at this point in you, Geo. So I'm gonna let's team up on Jerry time. But I mean, it was it was heavy on the Geo, though. I mean, oh. you narked me out for giving you a cigar on the sly. Uh, what else? Who called me the Bud Light exec? Who said that? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it you, Geo? <laughs> I don't think Father came. Yeah, <laughs> when keeping it real goes wrong. Is that who's that you, Geo? No. Wow, you you you. I told you she definitely was going to do her homework on who said what. She took notes, man. Uh, she kept receipts. Smart, baby, smart. Yeah. It's, a, it's the name of the game, right? <laughs> Listen, I, I enjoy some good banter here. So she, we, we got the the feistiness here. It's fun. All right. Uh, All right. 18th Amendment, the project itself. All right. We want to dive into that. Um, some say it's pretty close to other other companies idea ideologies and, and projects uh i mean do you have any kind of rebuttal to that what's the so difference gonna, yeah, so, yeah I, wait hold on one go second ahead, gotta back, back, back it up to concealed carry okay there were some there's some questions on that okay too, i have so. a question before we dive yeah. into that what does concealed carry have to do with the 18th amendment you want me to take this one omar or you want to take it let me let me take it let me take this one real quick <laughs> all right so concealed Gary is exactly what Fratello Cigars is to all of its other brands. It's his branch company, okay? Fratello Cigars or like uh, Altadis USA or uh, General Cigar Company or all of these companies, right? Mm -hmm. They are the master company to what other companies are, right? So Fratello Cigars owns Arlequin, he owns Fratello Classico, Oro, you know, so like uh, all of these other brands, right? And they just break down. That's what Concealed Carry is. Now, Concealed Carry is the mastermind of a theme of different cigars, just like 18th Amendment, just like the ones you guys are going to try it out tonight, and all some of the other brands that we have. That's what it is. Simple as that. Okay, so it's a sub brand, so that makes a little bit more sense now. So that's just the name of it. Correct. And now, in addition to that, just to clarify that part, it's also a a theme brand. What do we mean by that? It's also a brand that reflects upon all of its other ones. What does that mean? That means that we have, like, for example, Concealed Gary is all about like finding things that are different, that are unique, that are complex, that are different. And so we are looking for things, just like the theme of the prohibition, that we want to tell a story for. So it's a vessel for storytelling of different themes and different brands. Okay. Well, that, that makes a lot more sense. Like, yeah. Especially when you think like the name is. You see, carry, so... all of all a right. sudden, an hour of different smoking gave you this information. This is, I love yeah. it. <laughs> see, Geo and I are in law enforcement here in Buffalo, right? So we geek out on the gun side of things. So we're like, oh, concealed carry. This is going to be a cool idea. Uh, you know, this is going to have some like gun references or something cool like that. And then you know, we started diving into it a little bit, and we were like, what the hell? This has nothing to do with guns at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's still forthcoming. And um, when I when I joined and I was presented with concealed carry, there is every other month there's a drop for the next two years. So this series happened to be what was already kind of in motion. Um, but the concealed without giving away too much, like there is another series that's coming for PCA next year that may be more in line with what 
you were uh, thinking about with guns, so to speak. <laughs> Not yeah. so much about. Um, Don't give away life. that you just think yet. But yeah, not about so much. So it's concealed <laughs> carry is a is a platform that we want to start an educational uh, uh, conversation about blends, about history, about things that are going on in uh, current events. So I mean, in, in essence, it's it is like he said, a vessel for storytelling. So there's more to come, um, and you're not far off on thinking. Concealed carry, thinking uh, um, gun, gun, gun laws and stuff too, right? Okay, all right. So a lot of yeah. mystery, hence the concealed and new releases every month for the next two years. That's pretty crazy. That's a lot coming out. It's thirty six cigars yeah, if you do lot. the math. Yeah. It's very small batches, very exclusive, only for people who have a palette of smoking for eight to ten years within that window. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got I him. love, lo- I love the rabbit hole you went down with Brooks from Half Wheel, though. Just got to oh mention that. Oh my God! This I, is that, all Caleb. When, when, this had nothing that, to do with us. Bro, that Caleb, happened, is that, that your like, fault? Uh, is that your fault, bro? <laughs> I, I, I'm staying away from this one. I, I read the bio, and the bio specifically said like that time frame, and I was like, "There's no way." But maybe the bio just wasn't updated in a couple it, years. It hasn't been updated in no, like ten years. Yes. Yeah. We, so. You guys uncovered that during the show. Yeah, I, told I, I, was waited, like, I waited idiot. for the conclusion. Yeah, no, that, that's been decided. And then the focus <laughs> went off of you, Jennifer, and then went only to bit. Caleb. Caleb, are you retarded? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Uh, sli- I got knocked on the head. Uh, a lot of concussions. You know, it happened before I got into the priesthood, but a lot of concussions. The C and CTE stands for Caleb. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, maybe just update your bio sometimes, too. You know, yes, just look in on the bright side of things. Bio's All right. Bio's going to be updated. So- so, okay, so let's, now that we're still kind of on this and I threw some shade, so, so imagine, let's, let's rewind back to when we had our lovely encounter at PCA. So at that point. It wasn't the worst maybe, encounter we had, by the way. <laughs> it was impressionable. I want to hear all about this. No, I love, I love that it, it left a, an impression. Um, it did, I think yeah. that it, it Well, I mean, you're in marketing, so. Uh, <laughs> no publicity is bad publicity. <laughs> or all hey, publicity you guys publicity. are, you were my marks. I knew that as soon as you walked up, oh, I'm shit. like, I'm going to get these guys. They're going to be talking about this for three more episodes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. You're not even subscribed to the Patreon, Jennifer. <laughs> hey, I, oh, I'm, you're right. I'm not. All right. We, 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 have, a, <laughs> we have a paywall episode are you, are you on selling, it too. Are you selling me on something? Okay. No, no. So. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just a master marketer too. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> um, so, all right. I was like kind of lost in the sauce, talking my thing, not even officially part of the company yet. Concealed Carry was one of my first projects. How I understood this, and, you know, we can have a, a conversation about maybe what Omar's vision was and how I perceived it. However, it was more of a, a play to give something special back to the loyal consumer that's been with Fratello yeah. for at least eight plus years, which is where I was going with that. So it didn't, I think that was in response to you asking me about why not disclose the, the blend. Um, and I said, well, these, this is, in not so many words, I was saying, this is really not meant for media. This is really meant for uh, our loyal consumer that knows when we say it's a medium to a mild to medium, what a mild to medium means for Fratello. So I guess, Maybe that's what I meant about the palette. And it's really eight years experience loyalists with Fratello cigars, the Fratello consumer, the Fratello loyalist. They're, it's a very small group, right? I, it, it's not, the distribution isn't like something like where I came from, where it's just like massive. So I think Omar, what he had conveyed to me was that he wanted to give something back to brick and mortar. Mostly there are some stores, obviously, like that have a brick and mortar and an online presence. They're obviously part of the 75 if they're loyal consumers. And that's kind of where we wanted them to be incubators of the story to like have conversations with their, um, their regulars and talk about, you know, maybe some controversial topics, for instance, you know, I mean, the 18th Amendment now, and we'll talk about what the next one is um, after this, but that's kind of like to get the conversation going. A lot of what we're talking about is like, if you know, you know, the messaging is like, we would love to have like a Reddit, like talk about copycat cigars, right? Right now, because that's a controversy. 
I mean, just throwing it out there, hashtag copycat cigars. Like there's nothing really original in cigars anymore. And I agree with you hundred percent. So what we can do and the things that we do in marketing there's are something to, to kind of create these experiences, you know? Oh, Omar's about to come there's in There's something now. to that. <laughs> All right. And I know the guys are going to eat this up, but let's go <laughs> through that part right now. All right. I want to say something. I can see Giovanni just like like <laughs> eating this. I can see your face, bro. Just like, <laughs> let me have a stake at this conversation. All right. I actually I want to I want to say one thing real quick. When I first started smoking cigars, uh, you know, only five years ago. <laughs> not, not five years. <laughs> Are uh, you an eight year old cigar smoker? <laughs> nah, man. I'm breaking the rules. Um, honestly, Fratello Nevada was probably one of the first cigars I smoked, and I really liked it. It was kind of like one of those cigars that got me into it. So I love it. my first cigar actually was an Altidus product. It was an aging room Maduro. Mm. And after that, I started, you know, diving deeper into the rabbit hole. Let me try new things. Let me try different stuff. And, you know, then I got down this rabbit hole and Fratello uh, Nevada was a cigar that people were like, oh, man, try this. It's really good. So, you know, I bought a five pack of those. In fact, I might even have like one of the original five, like I bought like a five pack. I might even have one of those from five years ago, just sitting in a humidor somewhere. So it was a, it was a, a cigar that I really enjoyed. So no shade on that one. That actually is true. I love it. How about you, Giovanni? Tell me, what's the truth about you? Tell me. What's, what's that? What's the truth about you? Tell me. The truth about me? My first cigar? What is the first Fratello you ever had? Uh, the Arlequin. Oh, yeah, that was damn. mine. That was mine as well. Okay, yeah. same. Yeah. That was mine too, and we we reviewed that on a very early episode of our podcast. So that was that was a Hello. Oh, first God, year, I think. Yeah, yeah, first year. Well, you guys just re uh, you guys just released the the Connecticut Arlequin. How's that doing? There it is. There it Literally is. just a so week now. ago, <laughs> and I am been smoking the hell out of this. The hell out of this. It's, I am obsessed over it. It is phenomenal. Uh, I think you guys will absolutely love this blend. It is incredible. Actually, one of the people that were commenting on the podcast said, great, just what we need, another Connecticut. Do you guys feel the same way? No, I love I, Connecticut's. <laughs> I, I, I did no, my homework, Omar. I see. I know you love this. That I liked it every... Love I, looked, that. I, looked com- I looked in the comments... <laughs> I tracked. I, like it. I tracked it back. <laughs> no, I'm good with Connecticut's. You know, uh, there's been a lot of good new Connecticut's coming out, like, and they've all been pretty fire. It's flavorful, man. It, you know, you know, it takes it's it's harder work because Connecticut shade blends, right? Like a Connecticut wrapper, it's so hard, man. It is so hard to blend because it's hayish. That that wrapper is tend to be hayish, and so. It tends to be bland. And if you don't work on the binder to be higher flavor, if you don't work on the filler to give you long finish, it's hard to do. It is just hard. It it's is very not, delicate. Like you cannot <laughs> blend a Connecticut like you blend a. Uh, this cigar is uh, not a Connecticut, or, is it? This cigar is not a Connecticut. That's not a Connecticut. I, no. no. Can no. I take a guess? No. That's not a Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can no. I take a guess? What I That's think it what is? we want. The, but yeah. Good well, let, that was the segue. That was my segue into talking about All right. what I'm, we are smoking. There you go. Why don't we let him tell him what we're smoking before you guess? All right. I'll, I'll yeah, guess. That, we'll let yeah. Omar talk about it and then I'll guess. I think I got a good guess. So, Omar, you sent us a special little package for this episode. Uh, I did. We're getting to be one of the, I think, the first person to review this. So, the only person. Only. Ooh, Outside ooh. of you and Jennifer was a repeat. Hey. <laughs> that is uh, smoking a new release from Concealed Carry. Uh, Omar, why don't you tell us what we're smoking here? You're smoking the Detroit River, brother. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you thought the 18th Amendment had... <laughs> oh, if you thought the 18th Amendment had anything to do with, <laughs> with what all these other companies were doing, <laughs> I mean, my God, it's just like, do you guys that recognize this historic uh, <laughs> illustration that we have on this? Have you seen this before? I think that <laughs> there are going to be companies that are going to be very upset about the artwork of this cigar. 
Yes. They so are going mean, to be companies that do not like this. Can we describe what the what the artwork is on this? Yes. Let me be clear about the first part. If you Google you right now, Giovanni, Jerry, you guys Google right now prohibition. If you Google prohibition right now, it'll come up. At this <laughs> moment, I promise you, You'll be seeing what is the these first guys. image you're going to see? I see these Thank guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what this is, my friends? This is a stuck image. <laughs> this is an image in our life. So this is a historic image that has been plastered in life <laughs> that nobody owns except the only thing that it does it showcases a moment in our history. That's it. That's it. Now, I and actually do have a history question for you. I know you're a smart guy, Omar. Is that the Detroit that River smart, that they're pouring the that out? Not that smart. <laughs> what the fuck there? Are they pour, I'm not that is smart. That, is that the Detroit River? Does that have anything to do with the Detroit River? I don't know the story behind the Detroit it River. Does. But are they pouring the, the illegal moonshine or booze or whatever into the Detroit River? They would they would throw away all of the moonshine, all the alcohol, not only the Detroit River, but many other places. They would throw away all of this alcohol up on the like literally the sidewalks and whatever they could get right the so that they place. can throw the alcohol away every time the time they would find something. So that's the history. It's just a, it's just our history. So all we're doing is telling of the history between these different blends. Which, by the way, they get even better and better. But we're telling the history of all of these amazing cigars. And we're telling the history of Prohibition. This That's actually it. explains how bad the, why the water's so bad in Michigan. Flint, Michigan. In Flint, Michigan. This explains a lot. It's got moonshine in it. <laughs> Trust me, that, det- that alcohol, you know, FAS. You know, a lot to up a do lot of with it. A mess. lot to do with it, people. That's, well, I know Detroit River. That's a big uh, rum-running capital where they're getting rum, Canadian whiskey, all across the Detroit River from the border across. You know, I even said these guys when we were talking about it in Buffalo. They'd even, you know, they'd get it from Canada, and they would when the lakes froze over, they would equip their cars with, like, special skis and stuff so they could get rum and Canadian whiskey into Buffalo. So I'm sh- obviously the same thing in Detroit, too. And listen, I had this conversation, like, if you don't think I had this conversation with Skip Martin, there is something wrong with it. I definitely had this conversation with him. I was like, listen, clearly nobody owns a stock image over here. But what I'm saying is multiple companies have tried this story about prohibition. All we're doing is with prohib- with uh, Concealed Carry is telling stories and themes about things that have happened in our lifetimes. It could be World War II. It could be prohibition. It could be, you know, like, uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, we had the Cuban embargo. It could be a million things. Or we'll say is that there are stories to be told within a specific company that people should tell, and this is another one of those. Could we I mean, say that at, there was a little foreshadowing Patel in did. that? Rocky Patel did Prohibition too. It's just not about one particular company. It's about telling stories. And what are the stories being told makes sense for different people. Do you think there was a little foreshadowing in that uh, explanation? Maybe. I don't know. I don't even know what foreshadowing means. Between, between <laughs> Would you ever do like a JFK assassination cigar? Ooh, Ooh, the grassy I like knoll. that. The grassy knoll. Look at Jennifer's face. Look at oh. Jennifer's face. <laughs> Immediately was like, you know, we did that's toss what around. We, is no, all about. we did toss around something like that. Doing something with all the guns that kill that assassinated like influential people. So you the gun that, that shot Uzi that was used on Ronald Reagan. That's pretty dope. Well, you got well. Yeah. Well, you gotta, you know, and that's the other thing is that <laughs> we are kind of in a position where we have to legally not pick a side yeah. or be so controversial that it alienates those. Besides the people that are between eight and ten years, I mean that that is <laughs> a set a set 
um, demo that we are not going to stray away from. But outside of that, you know, we're not picking a side. There's a, I love a but, little bit of it. I love a little <laughs> bit of it. I, yeah. Omer's an Omer's Jennifer like, controls Omer's, that part of me. Whoa. Omer's, good, Omer's good guy. A good no, cop on bad cop. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> he's here. He'll be back. Know. We're all in the same room. Oh, no. We know Omar. He's a good guy. Giant man. He's a huge guy. <laughs> very, <laughs> very tall. Huge. Very tall man. Uh, worked for NASA, right? Yeah. For a little bit. For a little what bit. What did you do for NASA? So, a couple of jobs. My last job was I was the, uh, uh, the director of the budget for execution for science. So, I was managing a $5.2 billion budget for them. And before that, I was doing IT program and project management. So I did a few things. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever use any of the money the, of the two billion to start Fertello? <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone even notice we it? Silly questions, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Silly questions, Gary, huh? I like what some silly play? questions. Uh, Omar, is it harder to manage the two billion dollar budget or our budget? Whoa. <laughs> I feel like it's more Ooh. difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's I'm going to tell you this right now. It is 100% <laughs> harder to manage our current budget <laughs> than it is to manage a two point to a five point two billion dollar budget. Hands down. Hands down. <laughs> five point two billion is and a lot of money. I know Jennifer gets it all the time. <laughs> I got to imagine with a five point two billion dollar budget, you're just signing invoices all day, and I mean, there's really no like there's the the word no doesn't exist with that kind of budget. So different things, right? So I'll give you an example of what a typical day was. You have a budget allocation from Congress. Congress says, hey, Omar, you can only spend half a million dollars on JWST. That means James Webb State Telescope. That's what we're going to spend on. It's like, okay, perfect. We have an over budget situation. A crystal broke. This is not exactly what we were meant to spend. All of a sudden... We got to go back to the drawing board. We go back to ask for more money. That's kind of like the situation that happened all the time. So it was mm. more of like uh, catching up because we were doing things that nobody else had ever done. How do you budget? Let's talk about this for a second. How do you guys budget for something that has never been done before? Hmm. Let's think about this for a second. I'm, How do I'm you budget thinking. for those for those ear for those uh, you know, headsets that you have going on right now. If you, it's never been done before, I can tell you how we if, did it. I said, "Hey guys, we're gonna start a podcast," and I just bought all the shit. And I said, "This is what you guys owe me." <laughs> that's how I did it. There you go. But they were already made, so that's the difference, right? <laughs> that's how we started our if podcast. You have to do it from yeah, that was scratch, the no, and no one has ever, <laughs> ever done it. That's the difference. If you don't want to buy them, someone else will, and there'll be a co-host on the show. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now we actually have a budget, and then here's how responsible we are. We bought Caleb a priest costume. First, right. purchase of that, that was the heard. first purchase of the company. Just so you know, we had all the money in the bank. The, R and the I was like, Man, ROI on that is incredible, though. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm sick. I, I was like, I'll yeah. run it. I can run it for. I can run the numbers for you. I'm sure that it's going to be amazing. It's it's going to pay off in the long run. Just wait till I start uh, doing weddings and ceremonies like that. It'll pay off. There you go. Bar I see it. Even. I see it. In it's, you. Yeah, it's a long term goal. It's a long term. Can can you do a bar mitzvah in a rab like in a like a why not a priest outfit or do you have to be like a rabbi? Well, maybe we could buy a rabbi costume next. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Caleb will be ordained in all religions. Yeah. I want to pick a side if I were you. Yeah, I just see it. Sides. <laughs> Plenty of money to make everywhere if you just don't if you stay neutral. So I that's what Father Caleb says. In the words of Michael Jordan, <laughs> Republicans buy sneakers too. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, I mean, the back to the Bud Light exec though. I mean, you don't want to really, <laughs> <laughs> really open it up. And then there's there's some there are some now, hurdles. All right, you do have a marketing background. Now this is just going to be me asking. How major of a fuck up was that? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it was a pretty fu big fuck up. I think that there should have been some kind of checks and balances. I think that they, at that time, they were so scared to not be woke that it, they went way, way the other way. Um, yeah. 
by not making a stance, it t- took a stance. So then they went all in. Like I yeah. said, like when keeping it real goes wrong, that's a hundred percent. Are you happens. tough enough? And and can like <laughs> I'm trying to think of yes. how I want to word it. Yes. To to speak against <laughs> it. To speak Do against it. that. Do it. Are you anti woke? <laughs> Are you afraid to keep to 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 take a stance against that crazy shit? Uh, in certain, yeah, I I think I am. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm anti woke. I think that there is humanity, and then there is like blurring all types of um, what I consider reality. So I mean, that's my perspective. I, it's not that I think that the people that think otherwise are retarded or dumb and see i shouldn't even say retarded if i was nah, being woke. no it's okay thank we you very much <laughs> thank you very much we're bringing it back, we're bringing but it back. i'm a 90s kid no, we're taking that word back think, we're taking yeah, it back you know i mean why not it, it like it literally i mean i'm an english major that is a real word i i am not retarded so stuck in my ways that i <laughs> would do that so, See, I mean, I think that, yeah, there is a well, definition the world, for it. The world one day just flipped the switch and said, hey, we're just going to be real PC now. So <laughs> to that I say, we're just going to cancel cancel culture, and we're going to just say what we want to say. It's all well, right. I'm, ra- I'm, raising, I'm raising kids in this, right? So I have a first grader, and I have a fourth grader that think it's cool to be – gay or think it's cool because it's constantly put in front of them in a way that it makes it seem more attractive in a way so it's my job as a parent with my values and whatever if I feel that which which way or not like don't let society tell you what's cool or not do you think it's cool right like do, yeah. do you think it's cool mom and, that's and dad it. still know what's cool they know yeah we're hip with yeah. it yeah. And now, you yeah. know, with all the PC stuff, we could be like edgelords. Listen, that's, that's like a Gen Z <laughs> word, too, you know. Listen, <laughs> all we know is we just won't let anyone's kids hang around Caleb, especially in that costume. <laughs> I'm a very trustworthy. Right. Very trustworthy. <laughs> very, a very trustworthy True. priest here. Yeah. True. But, and then but yeah. just like the fanciness or the complete turnaround with Bud Light was fascinating. They made sure they got Harley Davidson as a sponsor, UFC, and Dana White says whatever the hell he wants. Very interesting, complete 180. Much different. Yeah. I still prefer my Coronas and Modelos. And they're owned by the same company. Or Fratello Pills that are coming soon. Yes. Yeah. You got our there address. Is, yeah. we'll, we'll take some. So <laughs> we, heard, we, yeah. we saw that Fertella was starting to dabble in the beer game. Uh, are these like micro brews or, or what, are we, what are we doing here? You want to talk on that project? I think it's kind of cool because yeah, I'm a big beer we have fan. Some, we have some really cool stuff coming up when, when we're pairing our beer with our cigars. Uh, I'm, a big, I'm a big craft brew guy, so I love craft brewery. And, uh, and I've tried it a thousand times, man. And, and people say it can, it can be done. And the reality is... Anything can be done. Okay, you can you can eat eggs and beer with cigars because it's all about flavor, right? It's like something adds flavor to your palate. And with that, what do you do? If you're smoking a cigar, you're comparing it. And that's what I, that's what that's what pairing is. It's just a comparison. So that's what we're all about, especially when it comes to beer. That's what we launched is a beer called uh, uh, a blue Dominican Pilsner. That pairs amazingly well with the Fratello, uh, with the Fratello Arlequin. And we have a new one coming up, which is the Art Imperiale, which is an Imperial IPA, hazy IPA. That pairs incredibly well with a classical blend. It is phenomenal. Not- I hope you guys get a chance to try it very soon. You're yeah. speaking my language now, man. I, I like like a, I like a nice hazy or just a regular I IPA. I see it in your eyes. I see it uh, in listen, your eyes. Listen, there's a, there's a local brewery here. Um, they make a, uh, a pineapple uh infused ipa it's delicious uh especially here in the summer it's like a limited edition beer that comes out once a year around this time of year but dangerous dangerously good you drink two three of them you're popped and then you drink the other three and next thing you know you're in a gutter so it is what it is Had many should, we talk, about, before I became a should we talk about the cigar while, while we still have it caleb what did you say you said you were going to take a guess on what the blend was yes um well father I, I, rap, father rapper Rapper, I'm gonna guess. I have a little hay. I'm getting some spice. I'm wondering. I don't want to say Connecticut, but I'm saying is this maybe a little bit of um, 
Habano in here? So from where? From the from the Detroit River. On the Detroit River. I'm getting a little spiciness. I got a little bit of hay too, but I'm wondering if this is like a Habano Habano wrapper. What country? Let's do what country. Ecuador. If you would have to guess the country of this Havana rapper, I'm not saying you're far off or you're wrong or you're right, but if you would have to guess that Havana Nicaragua, Havana Ecuador, or Havana Nicar Dominican Republic, what would you say? Oh, uh, now you gave me three options. I I said Ecuador first, but now maybe I'm now go with I, your gun. Okay. I said, stick I said, with your gun. I, I said yeah. Ecuador. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. So Ecuadorian. But okay. I don't know now because you gave me two other options and I'm I'm a little thrown off now that you mentioned Dominican. Yeah. How how does it compare to the eighteenth amendment? Did you smoke that one too, Caleb? Or guys, oh, any of you guys. Yeah, we, so. we, we smoked that on the show. We reviewed it. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh you did. despite not I, being I, able I, to I was, get I, it. I, yeah. We reviewed right, it. We should be involved in the review. We should hear the review. I love yeah. that. So it's public. Yeah. It's on an it's on an episode. Yeah. We do it in person. No, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah. So I think the eighteenth was a little bit creamier and had a little bit yes. more mocha to it. So it was a little bit lighter. This has got a little more spice to it. This is definitely a spicier cigar. Yeah. Spicier cigar. I would oh. say, yeah, it's one hundred percent spicier than the than the eighteenth yeah. amendment. Um I would say I'm gonna go Nicaraguan on everything on this. That's my guess, but it's got a little kick to it. I like it. It's not bad. I, love I think it, yeah. that in the in the in this, I don't know the blends as I mentioned before either. So I think what I can say is that strength wise, it's very the same as the 18th Amendment, though, right? So this is a medium, mild, medium. Like more medium, medium minus, if you will. I, I mean, I thought the 18th was a real mild cigar for me personally. Uh, this definitely has a little bit more punch. Uh, because of the spiciness, but yeah. What, what, is there like a fucking car takeover in your background, Jennifer? It's not me. It's Omar. Oh, oh. Why, why are you blaming me? Always me. I immediately blame me. you. Oh, he's right it's on the always... street. There we go. Oh. I blame you immediately. <laughs> what? All right, Omar's got the street racing going on in the background. It's your, it's the marketing director. You got to take the Bro, call. You, know, you almost got me fired for giving you a cigar on the sly. I was trying to be nice. I was like, "Hey, you know, they're going to kill me if I give you the display. Don't say anything." And he's like, "Oh, well, the, he's the all my marketing fault. director." He's all my I think he did you a favor, Jennifer. You got promoted. Yeah. Mm. Every day. You Every ended day up getting promotion. promoted. <laughs> It is. It is. I'm coming up. Um, okay, so <laughs> it's okay. Let's get to the Detroit River. So the, it's the packaging. It's going to come in something like this, emblazoned with that Detroit <laughs> River image right on the front, so that we can. There's no no uh, mistake I'm, that it is. I'm a, just going to say there's going to be brands that are not going to be happy, but bring us back on. What are you going to do? <laughs> We could be regular guests where we defend. Do you every own the Detroit draft. River? Do you own <laughs> the Detroit River? Oh <laughs> man's not backing down. I, I, I like it. Okay. Here we, we got to uh, when the actual release, we got to get like Skip and Omar on. Like we're gonna. What's the name of the bro? Name of, what's the name of the cigar? Vol that the 18th Amendment was controversial. That's why I was laughing so hard under the whole thing. Uh -huh. Is because we've been working on this for two and a half years. Two and a half years has been He's in the He's laughing work. because Waiting he knew this Jennifer. one was coming next. By the way, I've been with the yeah. company for two months. So two and a half years, two months, okay? So Omar I, had I'm, this, the bad, I'm the fucking yeah. bad guy. So I'm Omar, the bad Omar guy. had this planned out a long time ago. And that was actually going to be I'm one of my the questions. Fall. Like, uh, you probably planned this out several, several years before the ball got rolling here. Yes. Yes. Let me, let me, let, like, I have to say something about this. So, the reality is, when it comes to themes, when it comes to, pro, you know, specific situations, you cannot choose, I'm sorry, you cannot choose a historical image as your branding if you are too protective of it. Okay? We did, 
because we want to tell stories, right? But short stories. These are not multi-million stories or like, you know, 10,000 pages stories. We want to say short stories about moments in our lifetimes that, you know, affected us as human beings and that we as human beings detected and wanted to say, hey, you know what? This is wrong or this is right or whatever. But we reacted in a way or another. But you Google prohibition right now. Google it right now. And that's the first image that comes up. So I'm sorry. It is not a fact also, of like also, you owning yeah. one or another. It's just a fact of life. Also, it's 900 cigars per drop. So he's got to deal with it for 900 cigars in the market. And then we'll move on to the next one and move on to the next one. And Jennifer, on I have a question for you. Do you think as as a podcast, a, a cigar review podcast, we have earned the right to at least try them all? <laughs> or you did after after the noise you made. You did after the noise you made. Mm-hmm. No noise is good sometimes. Hey, sometimes sometimes noise is good. Stand on business. Except for when it's the kids. We know. do have quite the following, so <laughs> right. a lot of people listen to the show. It's not bad. I mean, like like Gio said earlier in the show, you know. It's not always bad. Publicity is a good thing. Always. There might be, there might be more this. people listening to the show after this. Well, hey. I think that this episode yeah. will get a lot of noise because <laughs> obviously we're, we're bringing you guys on as a re- like a rebuttal, a chance to get, you know give you the opportunity to explain you know the experience, the projects, and you know uh, that was a that was a little bit of a hectic week, wouldn't you say, Omar and Jennifer? Right. One hundred percent. A lot we had of a noise that week. After this, a lot of where noise. Jennifer and I were like. Yo, what this guys, you know what they said? Well, they're coming at they're coming for me, Omar. They're coming for me. I know. I felt a little <laughs> well I felt so, attacked for you, Omar. And a, yo, as we were recording we come up together. And and during that week, like it wasn't only a tough week for you guys. Like Skip Skip himself had one hell of a week too. Like not only when he saw that, but the whole stuff with uh Brian from Pervada as well. So he mm-hmm. He didn't have a good week as well, so he was definitely like uh, he had some vibes going on too. But I mean, I'm sure that happens Listen, to everyone. The reality is, I know Skip for years. Mm-hmm. He's a good friend, and I love him. I do. I Glad think he's gonna that. do yeah. stuff. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad Street that you and Skip are like friends, and you guys do talk. So that's good. We are 100. percent At least I, in my, in like, listen, I believe. We don't have zero animosity to the point of like zero to me. But the reality is when it comes to projects like this, it happens, guys. Like I launched the Detroit River way before I even saw the Volstead or anything like that. We are a company. The reality is we are a company that we pride ourselves in innovation. Do you think by any chance of the imagination I would ever launch something that has any relation to any other company because of a pleasure of mine? The answer is zero. None. Why? Because it's stupid. <laughs> As a business, the simplest answer ever. No, that's a- what did you think of Skip's it's comment? What did you think of Skip's it comment? Is a reality. Was dog rocket if taken? If you follow through another company, it is simply the word. It's one word. It is stupid. Now, however, there's there are times where it happens, like it happened this time around, where I literally plastered in my band and in our in our packaging the exact same image that has been rotating in for history, which is the Detroit River. As rotating, when you Google prohibition, is the first image that pops up. Am I to blame that I have to an idea that I said, oh, this is really cool. Why don't we tell the story of the Detroit River, of how people will grab, you know, the prohibition police and everything. They will grab this alcohol after they take it away from people and they would just dump it. This isn't rocket science, people. This is just history. Okay. The fun police had a so room the that day. Is, this is just how it goes. So no, I am the one hundred percent, the most opposed into like, oh, I took this away from this. No, this is about simply one fact. 
It was just the fact that he thought about the same thing. Well, you bring that it up. I and I was also doing some research, too, and I just saw that Villager and then Kristoff, they also have, like, a another Prohibition series of cigars coming out, too. I just saw that, like, there you today, go. Uh, looking in Half Wheel, and I never I never noticed that. And they, they had, like, the old-time police car and two different sticks, like, one's a Maduro, and I just saw that they had that coming out, too. So you everyone, rocket everyone science, man. Look, at, look at Rocky Patel. He did a Prohibition line, too. Yeah. So cigars and Prohibition... It's a interesting pairing and aspect for you guys in the cigar industry because you had alcohol prohibit, pro, prohibited at one time. So hopefully it doesn't happen to cigars with all these crazy laws happening. Exactly. Like that. Exactly. That's where the synergy is. Thank you. History might repeat that's itself. That's where it is. I, that's exactly Omar, one of what the... is, That is where it is. What... You know, you're going to tell you, let me take it a step further because I know I got to be out of here in like 10 minutes. So I'm so sorry about that. But it's literally... Good. I'm in Puerto Rico and like you gotta have fun. it's terrible. Hey, but I want to say this you gotta have some fun quick. over there. <laughs> yeah. So sorry I couldn't make it, Omar. So sorry I couldn't make it. Hey, listen. But here's I know the how they in Puerto Rico. It's my people's land. Concealed carry, honestly, is all about. Honestly, it's all about a position. It's all about we're tired of our of our. Of government and, and different things telling us exactly what we need to be doing with our time and the things that we need to be doing with our with our palate and with our flavors and what we need to be ingesting. I'm sorry, I'm not saying anything about politics. This is not about politics. This is simply about human nature, okay? People may have different points of views of what I do, but if I choose to enjoy a premium cigar right here on a beautiful terrace, you know where it's just literally for me it's a level of enjoyment I should be able to express myself right same thing happens and I'm not saying this, it's not about a politics so this is, politics can be, become too com- too complex even for my palate but what I'm saying is about a moment in our lifetimes where we as human beings took a stance and you know what prohibition was a stance prohibition was a stance for people who said, you know what, government? I'm going to enjoy a nice cigar on a beautiful speakeasy. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enjoy a beautiful alcoholic beverage. When you told me I can't do it, I'm going to freaking do it. And you know why? Because I believe that my values are superior to your stance. And so I know it is getting to that level, but it's exactly what you will be seeing from concealed carry in the future. The, the start is not just simply, I promise you, the sense is not simply a prohibition. Prohibition is just a theme for concealed carry. The future of concealed carry is how us as human beings take a stand and take a stand and say, you know what? I'm sorry. I thought the Cuban embargo was bullshit. Amen. And we're going to take a Preach, stand. Brother. Like that. It was also Thank pretty you. hypocritical. I'm tell you why I think situations in our lifetimes where should not or should have never happened so that is what concealed carry is all about it's sending that message of us as consumers as people saying you know what we disagree and that's what now it's that all about is a good so, ad read right there for concealed carry that's a good ad read right there it's the truth it's the truth all right i know you said you got 10 minutes omar before you go i want to ask what is on the dark side of the moon? Are there secret military NASA moon bases, uh, aliens, or or hear me out? This is a theory I have that the that the moon landing might have been faked, but you guys made it up there. But through Look, you're upsetting them, Caleb. Through, through satellites via communication and through the asteroid belt, you couldn't get that footage back, so they had to fake something on Earth. But really, space is like a graveyard full of like failed rocket launches, and there's just like space bodies and crash uh, shuttles all over space floating around. I just want to insert real quick. (laughs) Caleb, you're talking about a person who was in charge of a $5.2 billion budget. Watch what you say. You think Boeing's bad. You keep asking these questions. You're going to be off real quick. Oh, my God. The moon is a space graveyard, and uh, but no one knows what's on the dark side of the moon because no one's been to the dark side. Let me just say this. Okay, here we go. Let me let me put it this way. Okay. (laughs) Because to me, the (laughs) 
Oh, this might, Sorry, be, okay. this might be the Sorry, to me the whole conspiracy theory. To me, I, I have to I have to skip on that one. Okay, conspiracy theories when it comes to that, Uh-oh. I have to skip. But the dark side of the moon, I do love. Okay, mm-hmm. so this part we will have a conversation. So when it comes to the dark side of the moon, the reason we went back to the moon after fifty two years, literally just landed in Twitter machines and Fratello. Had a beautiful collaboration. I'm sure yeah, you guys saw that. that. Um, we went to the dark side of the moon. We went to the South Pole, which is the darkest part where we don't know any information about. So very little about the Indians have landed. The Chinese have <laughs> tried. So many people have tried to get information, but it's hard to get because mm-hmm. we can see it. We cannot see from here to the moon, although it is. we tried, we cannot see it. The reality is, is that we need to know, we we feel there is a component on the south pole of the moon that has water. And if it has water, which we haven't been able to prove, then we know that there is life, or there has been life. And if there's been life, we need to track or backtrack of where that has begun. So for the for NASA, and it's just everything, I'm not telling you anything that is like, Omar, like from when I was at NASA or anything like that. You can go and Google this right now and go and get this information. But the reality is we know very little about the South Pole of the Moon. That's why we're landing yeah. there. We want to know if there is information about literally if there is water or not so that we can understand thir- certain things about the history of the, of, the, of, this, of, the, of the closest body to our Earth, right? So... The moon is our closest body. So we need to understand what the whole situation is about, right? So there is a lot behind it. It's not just as simple as, you know, like, oh, like, do we land on the moon or not? It's not as simple as that. It goes beyond something like that. It goes to the point of, like, if there is water, there was life. If there was life, when did it exist? How? What is the longevity? Where is where did our yeah. universe begin? And there was, we know, and this is, the, this is the bottom line of how complex this all is. We know 4%. NASA, the whole, the, it doesn't matter if DOD, DHS, anything. We know 4% of the, what, the, what the universe is comprised of. 4%. That's, I can tell matter. you for sure. I could spend that five point two billion dollars way better than NASA can, <laughs> because if you only know four percent, I could sell you a hundred percent of shit on Earth with five point two billion. A hundred percent of shit, just minus the ocean. Yeah, minus the deepest depths of the Thank ocean. You. Yeah. That's it. That's Thank where the that would be. Yeah, but I have one moon though. question: Why the fuck do we? My iPhone takes better pictures than what exists on the fucking moon and what we have on the moon. So. Why doesn't no one just go up and shoot that shit with their iPhone? They, we'd have way better footage of the moon. I'm telling you, aliens. I'm man. throwing it out there, same man. Qu- same question. Same question. You, you, you guys got to be QAnon, Father Caleb. <laughs> Praise be to all life. We'll get back to you on that one, I guess. But I feel like my iPhone takes better pictures than the shit that they go up to the moon with. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, oh my. We got some really cool shit, though. We just landed, literally, one of the most advanced pieces of, like, on Earth to be able to land on the south pole of the moon at a velocity that is thousands of miles and be able to land it. Yes, did we tip over a little bit? Sure we did. <laughs> but we, even with that tip over, we did some pretty cool, amazing things. Uh, so, yes. It is it's just hard, man. Science is hard. It's just hard. E- Elon Musk is going to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, He Jennifer? hasn't yet, baby. He well, hasn't yet. Do you think these astronauts have more than eight to ten years experience? Uh, they better. I'm, if they want to smoke this cigar, then yeah. <laughs> <What about? laughs> did, you, did you like that uh, my new well name when I came back? The, uh... <laughs> Gio did rename himself. Did you guys just notice I saw that? that does not have eight years smoke. Where, where are we at? Seven? No. Are we, we're, we're getting not there. even edging eight. Okay. Yeah. Well, 
I think and Caleb has and, over and ten years experience. And us. definitely not eight years experience with Fortello, which was the no, actual yeah. comment. So <laughs> yeah. We'll circle back to this in a few years, and then we'll see if your palate has Omar. changed and how that Eighteenth Amendment is. Be- before you go, Omar, tasting. I have a question for you. When did you uh, when did you Give start smoking me. cigars and where did your love for cigars uh, come from? Because obviously, you know, you, you worked at NASA where you're smoking yeah. cigars already, or was it like a habit you picked up? Is it like you know? I did. The shit I with did. The boys? I started smoking cigars when I was like 17 years oh, old. Oh yeah. I uh, what what's your I heritage? My first cigar. What's your heritage? If you're familiar with Santo Domingo, it's called the Malecon, which is like literally as a you know in the, the, the Santo Domingo is the, yeah it's the waterfront. The waterfront. Yeah. That's it. The waterfront. So I started smoking cigars the first time it was there. I was graduating high school. I thought I was so freaking cool because everybody else was smoking cigarettes and I was smoking a premium cigar that was gifted to me, by the way. Uh, but it was gifted to me by somebody who I tried multiple times to get into like the cigar shop so I, they can teach me because I was fascinated by it. My grandpa was smoking it. I was I would go, this is a, a retail shop that was there next to my house, right? So I was just so fascinated by that the story that I followed through. And so first cigar I ever smoked was 17. I probably coughed along in an eyeball in the process, but I fell in love with it. And the moment that that happened, I just kept on doing it. And I'll tell you this. One of the reasons I went up as high as I did at NASA, where I was, started off as a GS9 and Ended up as a GS-15 in the agency. Within five years, honestly, I attribute to cigars because cigars do bring people together. So every single time there was a conversation, even I was golfing with the administrator after two and a half years. The yeah. NASA administrator was golfing with me, or I was golfing with him, bro. Like, <laughs> Who's the better golfer? But I was golfing with him That's, while yeah. smoking cigars because what do you do? You smoke cigars, man. And the guy would be like, hey, is it, where, where, where's the Dominican kid? That's how he would refer to me. Are you from the Dominican like, Republic? Yes. I was uh, born in, the, in Puerto Rico. for I spent about nine months here. But I was raised after nine months, born, born in Puerto Rico, in the Dominican Republic. So, I've been, so I'm considering myself mostly Dominican than I do Puerto Rican, although I was born in Puerto Rico. Do you like baseball? But my entire life, I spent it there. Do you like baseball? I know. Is Big Poppy the greatest athlete to ever come out of the Dominican Republic? Bro, Albert Pujols. Big Poppy is the man. Exactly. See, and, well, and there's Big Albert Poppy Pujols. is the man. Albert Pujols is the man. Pedro Martinez. Come on. Listen, I'm even gonna drop that name. Sammy Sosa is the man. I love. Steroids. Let's go. We love steroids. <laughs> love Sammy Sosa. Gio loves steroids. Gio yeah. loves steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Gio eats that shit for breakfast. Flex, Gio. Flex, flex, flex for Gio. Flex Gio, for. Gio was a lot more talkative on the show about me. Today he's a little quiet. <laughs> I'm listening. We're talking here. <laughs> Listen, you're gonna be stuck with a couple of more of the conversations, Jennifer. Oh. So be careful what you ask for. Okay. I know, I've been quiet. I've been quiet. I I love this, though. It's, just, it's what Thank it's you. all about Thank for you guys. me. Yeah. Well, Omar, guys, I don't I know if you got a jet, but we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Roberto Sorry that Clemente it longer. Better. Sorry that it took me a second to get in, but I want to do this again. I love all three of you. All four of you I love. We'll have a conversation even further after this. And uh, you know what, Jennifer? I think we should make Every concealed carry drop, kind of exclusive. I think, I think we should at least right have here. a conversation about it. Yeah. I would like to. I want to take this journey with you guys. I do want to take this journey with you. I, I got the like credit it. for eight years. <laughs> yeah, and, that's funny. Yeah, and it's a holiday guys, weekend. I want time so and a half, much. Omar. Time and a half, okay? Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you so much for having me over. It was really amazing. Okay? Omar, right. honestly, you... this should be hazard pay. <laughs> <laughs> Omar, before you leave, uh, one last thing to touch on baseball players. Roberto Clemente was better. <laughs> controversial. Controversial. <laughs> controversial. Controversial. And I'm Cuban, you, so guys. we'll leave that for, a ne- for the next one. Anytime, Omar. Jennifer, are you Anytime. popping off too? 
Yeah, I mean, you want? I mean, you want to hang out with me now? Now we're friends. Hang. We, hey, listen. Now we got friends. other stuff to talk about. <laughs> A I'll little stay. bit longer, Jennifer. A I'll little stay. bit longer. Yeah. You got to get your sound bites. I, I have a Thank you so much. All right, bye, Omar. Omar. We have to still find out what's in that Stanley. So any That's Omar, important. anytime you want to come back on, you're f- you're free to come back on anytime. We thank love you all, guys. We love all our guests. So blessings, many open. blessings, and thank you so much for the opportunity to talk, guys. All right, all right. take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, Patrick. Feel the spirit, Bye, guys. See you, bye. Bye, Omar. Have fun. So all right. So can we prank call the guy from from Romacraft? Get him on here and just see if he wants to talk about this. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know I'm if that's a good kidding. idea, Jennifer. That's I'm just playing. I would never do something like that. I'm not. I'm not like uh, contra, uh, contra, confrontive like that. Con- confrontational. Con- con- that's confrontational. That's confront- Maybe, confrontational. Oh my god! You and Caleb have Wait. something in common. You, you both can't con- talk. Confront- <laughs> Sometimes I glitch. I do. I'm sorry. That was a glitch. Well, maybe this oh could be an opportunity to bring everyone together one day in the future. We I could always do possible link ups. Who knows? I want to. Hit that. We're going to host the debate. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Like the cigar debate. Yeah. Well, I, I actually. Would like, I, I would like to go head to head with these cigars. I mean, even though they have nothing, they they were never meant to be, compete. But like the the, the stri- I, I'll be honest. Omar told me that this other cigar was out there and i said omar concealed carry has a whole different strategy it's such a small thing like i i don't see how he could see this as competition and think that we're stealing his idea because it's like i was explaining it's really meant for as a retailer like program and it's built that way as a nice thing to do to build partnership within in the trade and so that we can go do and host these herfs and things like that and do educational um, opportunities where, you know, we can start talking about the blend and what people think about the blends and really get that. There's no data on cigars, uh, premium cigars. So the consumer data that you get is lumped into uh, tobacco, right? And, and cigarettes and vapes and all of that. It's, there's not like a a segment of premium cigar consumer data that they track. What you do is you take your retailer data and then you take the imports, the exports from the countries that are sending the, the tobacco and you kind of do your own estimation. So this is a way to really engage with the people that are smoking the Fratello cigars, what they think about they are We already have a captive audience, right? They within a whole, I mean, I, 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 thousands of brands, they still choose to smoke Fratello. So let's give them something a little special to start to kind of talk about it a little bit more. And that's what Concealed Carry, how I understood it to me. Really, like when I, I made that joke about like Fight Club, like it is, it's kind of, it was meant to be like this little society where we have conversations like we have, we're having right now and, you know, talk about what the blend is and what is hitting the mark and what doesn't for me. Personally, I mean, I'm not talking shit, but, you know, the cigar, like you said, the ash was flaky. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean it's a certain blend? You know, like, what can we what kind of data can we get from that? Is- what do you think of the cigar? Because because I mean, I, I think the flavors are there. I, yeah. I, I do think that the cigar, uh, despite flaking easily, does taste very good. Um, but yeah. the cigar got, is very light. Yeah. I think that the construction wise, there's, I mean, I, who knows where we got these from? Like maybe they were in the warehouse for a long time before we sent them to you. I have, I have the same batch that you have. Um, those came, aren't already, they were not box, right? They came in a bundle. Sure. So um, the actual packs have like a bovida in them and they're humidified. So maybe that'll help, but um, it's a learning. And like I said, they're very, very small. Something gets completely out of my comfort zone is these small batch things. I did work for Rafael Nodal, so I did work in with Aging Room and that smaller batch, but my brand was Monte Cristo and Romeo Julieta, so like much different um, volume production, I would say. So this is interesting. I want to ask you, how long have you been in the industry and how long have you, how long of experience do you have? Uh, well, like smoking, uh, I'm Cuban heritage. I'm first generation. So, um, cigars have been part of my life forever. Um, my first cigar, I would, I mean, 
probably not good to say. It was probably like 12 and it was like playing dominoes, you know, like very, like what you could imagine, like a very, uh, cu- a, a very she's Cuban. Dominoes, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, a very we, Cuban we know, thing. We know some people who started smoking at 12, so that's okay. <laughs> There's nothing against that. I mean, not like I would, you know, they were good cigars. Um, so it was like now, a family I mean, thing for you. I started from the top, you know, I mean, they were, yeah, it's, yeah, it's part of my culture, you know, that's just my dad had a humidor, like, you know, my whole life. I just always knew that. But in like professionally, um, I started at Altidus in uh, January of 2020, um, right before the pandemic, actually. Um, so it was four years with them, uh, left there around January and then started working with Rotella. But prior to that, actually, my experience is uh, in uh, premium fragrances and beauty. So I have mm-hmm. 10, my, my background was I was a, a director of marketing at Revlon for travel retail. Nice. So, yeah. Revlon, so big name. That's a big name. Yeah, they have sub sub brands, you know, um, like John Barbados cologne. There's a man a man's cologne that they they do. Oh, yeah. Juicy, Couture, Juicy Couture, like things. I like actually that. just bought. Uh, so this is gonna be real. This is actually kind of really strange. I just bought a Juicy Couture cologne today that I really like, and I don't know if they still make it or it's a discontinued thing, but I really like their dirty. Oh, English. John Bar- the jo- Oh, the dirty English. Yeah, that I love that cologne, and I That's feel like an uh, every time I see it now, it just hits it. It just sits on like Marshall shelves and like TJ Maxx. It's twenty fucking bucks, and dude, that yeah. shit is. It smells That's really called, good, and I like it. It's called Mastige. So those those products are produced with a lower cost of goods for that type of distributor. Uh, I but love. I love the, the that juice shit. is the same. The smells juice is good. the same. So yeah. Caleb actually is more of like an Axe body spray kind of guy. So. Mm. Hey, hey, let me defend myself real quick. Uh, That's all they can afford in the church. In the church, you can't afford much. No, I'm uh, Aqua de Joe. That's what I like. Oh, that's, like a, that's that. a throwback. Or, um, like what is that? that? The, the one that's shaped like a body in a blue container? Like the Jean Gauthier? Jean Gauthier, yeah, like Jean Gauthier yes. Yeah. Or anytime uh, you wear like Versace Eros, uh, get a lot of compliments on that one. Le Homme. Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> Bougie. Always, always get a lot of compliments on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. By I, other men, too. Los Saint- Saint Laurent, I have uh, one of them, and uh, I'm a Prada person. I like Prada carbon. Burberry, not that bad. Uh, Brit by Burberry for men, great. (laughs) So, I mean, I think it actually is an interesting conversation to lend itself to you guys. You drink whiskey, and you, like, really are kind of experts in that. Same thing with, you know, cigars. There's there's flavor notes. There's aromas. Um, So... There is a synergy from coming from beauty. Like people are like, oh, how do you come from cosmetics into cigars? Like one's very, you know, feminine, male, like oriented. Um, but it's both, they're both very intimate products, right? You put a cigar in your mouth. I mean, you put cologne, makeup, everything on your body and your face. And like, I think that the, the packaging, especially with, with fragrances. And if you take it further to like travel retail, like in duty free, you're literally, it, it, it lays out just like a humidor. You're right next to your competitor. Right. I mean, so there is definitely a lot to be said about that. And I think that if so, usually somebody who's into cigars, premium cigars, and like, you know, has a deeper knowledge of uh, liquor and, and notes and things, they, they're into colognes as well. So that's, so for me, products and product marketing and really understanding like the R and D and the, the raw materials and the process and all of that helps to tell my story, the story of, of marketing. So that's kind of my background. All right. Well, I appreciate you referring us to as expert as experts because uh, we don't even do that. So thank you. Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> well, not we in don't. cigars. You're not experts in cigars, clearly by your title, but um... <laughs> we don't claim to be. But I can tell you one thing: we are going to provide is an entertaining interview, an entertaining show, and we're and gonna this be has been to, great. And we're no, going to dive into things that um, you know the cigar nerds will enjoy, but they will also be disappointed by. You know, we're not going to sit here and talk about blends. We're not going to sit here and talk about shit. That it's fucking dry. It, it's dry. It's boring. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk. We want to talk some shit and give you an opportunity yeah. to defend yourself. We want to fucking talk to you know the giants in the industry and not talk cigars. I want to find out, you know, like what was your childhood like, like, mm. like things like that. And that's, that's that I stuff. do well. 
So maybe That's you should have came up to me at PCA with that approach versus asking me about cigars. No, no, no. First of all, let's clarify this. Yes, <laughs> you guys sent us a media release, a press release on a new cigar, oh, and we came and inquired that. about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it. In which your rebuttal was, you know, this is really for the palate of eight to ten years. And then my buddy was with us, who's also from Buffalo, and was like, I'm a fucking retailer. Can you show me what's new and what, you know, maybe we want to bring you guys in. No, that's not me. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why you don't want to buy this cigar, if you want. <laughs> you, don't you don't have, have eight, eight to ten years smoking. You don't have eight to ten years experience. I got, very, inqu- very I got a little specific. inquiry for you. So while we were at your booth, I saw some other cigars that were very, like, beach orientated. And you mm. had this one that was, like, the snowbird. Florida man. Florida mm-hmm. man. And then you had, and like, then the, the snowbird, snowbird, which is, uh, if I was ever going to start a line. Yeah. That's what I wanted to call it. And then I saw it and I was like, we can't do it. We can't do it. They fucking have it already. That's very annoying to me. Because we're Uh, from Buffalo and a lot of people that live here, they, I know so many people that vacation live half the year down in Florida. So we're mm -hmm. like snowbird. And that's what everyone calls it. You're the snowbird. But we want to use it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a flamingo on it too? Yeah. they're probably So the idea behind that is like all different. And we wanted to do that. All different tourists that come to Florida. So there was the Florida man. I guess that's the local. Then there's the snowbird. Um, then there's think, yeah, you had one other one too. I yeah. I oh, the Pocahontas, right? Oh, the Pelican and the Pocahontas, but those are those are different. But yeah. they're, they're for a- ABC liquors. They're um, oh. uh, private labels that we. Do those are for like uh, first sm- first time smokers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, tourists. Uh, yeah. You know, the, those are to buy with the the shooters of Fireball at the counter. Well, so right, we, exactly. So, Impulse buy, right? So, I was in Florida. Yeah. So Jerry and I are Polish, and we saw like the flamingo thing. We're like flamingo snowbird. It's perfect because like everyone around here, they put the little flamingo on their front lawn, and it's like a sign that you're like a snowbird going down to Florida, or that you're Polish, and, or that you're Polish. Yeah. For some reason, well, the flamingos and the uh, flamingo. I'm from New Jersey, there. so I actually I I'm not from Florida. Oh, and you're from the worst it, state ever. No offense. <laughs> New Jersey really is the armpit of America. Yeah, I mean it's a big <laughs> suburb. Um, I guess it also depends on where you grew up in New Jersey. Like I think that for me, it was like a suburb. Like I was right near a train station that would take me right into the city. You know, it was a different kind of vibe like hoboken area i don't know it's different than where, say where South in florida Jersey. are you um i'm in uh in, like near fort lauderdale near fort lauderdale like near weston oh. you so know where speaking West- of trains you yeah. you're still alive which is great uh with bright line <laughs> running through the area that train hits somebody something and kills people pretty much all daily. the time yeah uh, all the time. i talk about bright line all the time i i <laughs> i talked about this with pete johnson last week uh because he's down there too, and and he's in Miami, so obviously Brightline runs that whole East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to come up with this T-shirt. It just says "I <laughs> survived Brightline," and it it was just it's just the train. Imagine like how traumatic. I mean, obviously it sucks to get hit by a train, but the people that are like on the train, it's just like, daily, every day. Like, okay, today we might hit. Oh, sorry. We have to stop for Ruins fifteen minutes. Day. Well, yeah. Like, Ruins your whole call? travels. Imagine Terrible. commuting to work, and, and they then push it to kids. Every day, it to the kids. boss is like, like it goes okay. from here to Orlando. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to take my kids on this Orlando thing so that like someone dies and they have to see death. Like, it's yeah, scared they, from uh, with a bright one, yellow <laughs> train. Yeah, bright yellow, bright line. Every time it went by, it was like, oh, there it is, there it is. I was in Boca. I was having a great time. Hanging out with all the old people, just smoking cigars. And every time Brightline went by, it was like, oh, my God, I survived it again. I can't believe it didn't derail and kill everybody. You uh, made it. Up train. All right, Jen, here's another one for you. we got to ask, what's in your Stanley? <laughs> what's in All it? right. If people I'm being perfectly honest, it's a uh, blend. Uh, it it's undisclosed. At, undisclosed. <laughs> there's some alcohol. Eight in to there. ten years drinking experience. There's definitely, only. there's definitely alcohol in there. It started as a Tito's and Stoda. Then, when it got closer to time to do this, I didn't. I was like, I'm not going to do another vodka. But there was still like this bottom part still had it. But then I put a Truly on top of it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta level up that Truly because it's not enough alcohol percentage. So you got to make it a hard Truly. Right. So it's a hard Truly. Right. So I mean. 
it's it was big. Now we're down to about this. So I, I were you I'm nervous done. about coming on? Mm, not not about this, just about like technical things. Like I didn't want it to rain. I'm a planner. I didn't know if my dogs were going to start barking. All of a sudden, like my kid's going to have a bloody nose. Like that type of stuff kind of makes me nervous. I was uh, I I just thought it was fun to blame you for every noise that was inconvenienced in the background. Yeah, I, I'm blaming you for everything. You you are fault. the scapegoat of Fertello, <laughs> and we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us and thank you for coming on to explain the project. Of course, no, this was awesome. No, and I I'm sorry that the our first impression wasn't the best, but it wasn't an impression nonetheless. And I Got will me say, on the show. you can even <laughs> ask Omar. We gave the opportunity to explain before we did the show. And yeah. I promise you to God, we're not just going to blindside you. <laughs> you know, good. so we just no, wanted the, to... The we, best part of that whole thing was the, the rabbit hole with, with Half Wheel for me, though. When, oh, when you guys was, started researching that We shit, were on I your side like, on this. <laughs> we, we told Caleb he was a fucking idiot. Hey, hey maybe just some <laughs> updating needs to be done. That's all. That's, or <laughs> like maybe update. just look at other articles. Well, they were all yeah. the same. But no, it actually, that put me, that part of it is the one that st- stood out to me. I'm like, oh shit, is that like, did I, was that like a narrative I was telling everybody? Like, like, was I like glitching or like on like super marketing like mode? Like, I didn't know, honestly, I really didn't know what I was talking about. But yeah, at that so point, I heard the number and I saw the number and I was like, oh, there's can't, be. I can't, I, like, if she if offended them too. If you're showing me numbers, I'm like, this is like, uh, in my brain, numbers are showing up at the same. I'm like, this gotta be a you're like, this chick's a savage. I have one <laughs> question before you leave. All right. All right. Did Half Wheel get the cigar? So I have, from my previous job, I have a good relationship with these guys. So I'm um, joking. I, Obviously, I, I know they got it. They haven't gotten this. No, 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 no. But they got the story. I mean, things like that. I mean, I talked to them about. It. No, they don't. No, you. I swear to God, you guys are the first. No, I believe you. I believe you. We're talking. We were talking, we're talking about, about the Eighteenth Amendment. Oh, do they have the Eighteenth Amendment? Probably not. They do. Probably not. Uh, they definitely do. Probably not. Jennifer, they don't smoke them. They don't smoke them. So we appreciate well, you. We yeah, appreciate, appreciate you yeah. guys popping on on a Saturday night on Memorial Day weekend to hang out with yeah. us. We appreciate the hospitality and the nice package you guys sent us. Of course, we'll keep them coming. You guys look we like you like have that. a good you have a good setup there. So, oh, yeah, I can, the, I'll visit, but like only in the summer, obviously. Hey, listen, <laughs> we, we, it's all one here. Check it out. We have all one. Look at that. So this started as like a, a hangout, and then you're like, shit. These are some good conversations. Let's maybe we should record. Let's them. let's impose them on everybody. Guys, we're like brand new <laughs> to cigars. Let's start a fucking podcast and just tell everybody with eight to ten years that they should or shouldn't smoke the cigar. Yeah, it's... yeah. I mean, target target that those bitches. I mean, that's just really niche. It is between an easy, be, it is an easy between market. eight and ten. Yeah. If you reach that after that ten, you're done. So it's got to be in that very. Um, slim window. So I think the episode title is going to be uh, eight to ten years viewing experience required. <laughs> oh. Eight to ten. Yeah. <laughs> is that catchy enough? You're the you're the marketing expert. What would you uh, call I, this episode? Uh, whew. I'm on the spot right now. I it's definitely an it's definitely a call out to eight to ten. I would do like a greater than, less than eight and ten only or only. Viewable. That's what I said. Eight to ten yeah. years only is the name of the episode. That yeah, works. that works. I like it. Yeah, it I love that. But you, did, but you were wearing your priest. Was that the first time you launched the priest? No, oh, no. Did, he drunkenly did it with Pete Johnson the other day, and they had about. A oh, you were showing up for Pete. How yeah. cute! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he was ready to sponsor a segment with him. That that by the end of that, it was pretty funny. Sometimes, sometimes he's like, "I love making people uncomfortable. This is it." Sometimes you gotta woo your guest. You gotta, no, you gotta I, woo your I, guest. I got you. It's all I'm, it's I'm a like market. That. It's a niche market, like you said. I you get it. You do what you gotta do. You know. Listen. At the end one, of the day, it's cigars. I, I know it's a long <laughs> one. That actually episode was hilarious, but it was four hours. So. Four hours. Four, Four hours. hours long, Jennifer. Four Pete hours. was like, no, I want to stay on. I just lit up another cigar. I was like, all right, we, all right we're rolling. Read, read the room. I'm reading the room. You guys want to go. Let's go. Let's go. No, no. We just <laughs> have two segments we got to do after this, and then that's oh, it. Oh, shit. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, we do our- right, uh, there's more. 
yeah, we do our little Patrol Gone Wild segment where we just talk about random police stories throughout the country. And So if I were going to watch another episode, the one that you, I mean, the Pete Johnson one's a good one. And like, it's can you very, time, can very you, funny. Can you time stamp it? Like, can I just have like where to where to watch? Like two, hours, hour uh, two hours is good. <laughs> two hours, 16 minutes. The drunker and we three, get, the funnier three, it is. And three hours is a good mark, too. I, I actually time marked you. Actually, oh, I sent geez. it to to Charlie Monado, and I said at at point forty eight, the fanboys are doing a deep search. <laughs> <laughs> All That's right. amazing. We'll have to contact him next. <laughs> I feel like he would be an interesting person to have on the show. I've already said it. I said we should have Charlie on the, oh, the scariest the guy in the cigar industry. He is. He is. See, if that tells you something about me, like those are the people I connect with. So that's funny. We say we say it all the time. Obviously, we are not manufacturers of cigars, but Charlie Minato, to some people, that's that's the guy, man. That's the scariest guy in the industry. He can that make or break can, your cigar. Yeah. He'll tell you that your cigars, yeah, it tastes like wet newspaper. Yeah, then, like yeah. exactly. <laughs> What's the worst thing you've heard him say about a cigar? You obviously It was that. Heard. It was to, he hate I, I won't say he hates. He'll 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 say that he does not hate anybody, but he's very tough on Ra- Rafael Nodal. Read some of the old school aging room ones. It was like uh, day old oatmeal, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> wet newspaper was another one. I mean, and these guys, you know, they they have like a big ego. They're like old school, like you know, Cuban. Like to say say that to to him, you know, to read that was difficult. But yeah, no, aging room, and they are, definitely are, read them right. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, no doubt. What's 100%. actually interesting to us is like how many people that we found out like actually are like watching like from the industry on our show. Like, like oh shit, <laughs> we're like oh we're just the small guys in Buffalo. No one gives a shit what we say. Nah, well, and then everybody, everybody listens yeah. to it. It's it's cool. It's something new. It's a different perspective on the industry, and you know we like yeah. There'll be like a floor. whole headline about me being woke ish now tomorrow. <laughs> oh, she Not took a stance all. on woke. <laughs> it wouldn't be until Wednesday, but yeah. oh, Wednesday. All right. Oh wait, so, so when? Oh wait, that's a good to know. So Wednesday, I have to plan a press release. So you guys are going to air this on Wednesday, yes. and then we can kind of go that go that route. Okay. New well, drop. Yes, the 29th <laughs> We appreciate having you on, Jennifer, and uh, Thanks, you're not so bad. <laughs> You're not you guys so aren't, bad. You guys aren't all that bad either. Yeah. But don't worry. Next time clear I get any uh, sneak uh, <laughs> cigars, I'll just keep it to myself. Yeah. I mean, God, I was trying to throw you a bone, but <laughs> I was like, you don't want this. You want this, but it's fine. <laughs> and then she left the rest of us to die. Yeah. Just dogs. Oh, without, that's right. Dogs without, yeah. dogs without bones. You were the like you're the guy that went up for trick or treating, so I got hit you up Me? first. No, <laughs> no right. him, Gio. Oh, hey. Gio was trick or treating. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to have conversations with people, and Gio is the one fucking sitting like, there with right, his well, bag wide the, open. Where's yes, the free shit? There, where's the free that. shit? <laughs> Yo, listen. <laughs> to be fair, we do review most of the shit that we get. So yeah, it's. I would say, and the two PCAs we went to, like of all like the new releases that we got, we might have missed. Probably, I'd say under ten percent. And it, honestly, uh, based on the consensus that Half Wheel puts out, mm-hmm. we're right there with most of the shows and uh, you know rating lists. So I, oh. that that always makes you feel good when you're like, "Wow, okay, these guys have been in the industry for eight to ten years, and we have the same exact <laughs> list they do." So that's always I, a nice. Gives thing. Cre- it gives you immense credibility, and yeah. I'll take that. As a, as a learning. I, I judge the book by its cover, I guess. Sorry, It's guys. all right. We're young in this industry, <laughs> and then we need to all stick together. We're the future no, of this no, industry. What you guys are doing is great. I think that bringing in the different lifestyle and the fact that you say that cigars is actually a small part of it, I think that that really lends itself to the next generation of smokers that are coming into that it's not just you know, it's a lot more broad. You could be, it could be something that you do with golf with your grandfather when you're drinking whiskey, et cetera, et cetera. Well, yeah. like I said, we're, we're the young people in this industry, Jennifer, you're one of us, you know, we're, we're young people and you know, we're the future of this industry and you know, we want to bring light to, you know, and, and, and highlight some of these great people that are in the industry and you know, mm-hmm. Thanks. it's important. That. 
Now, it's like, important for someone like Omar, too, who's starting off, you know, kind of grassroots. Um, anybody who buys a cigar is because, you know, he's actually made that connection, which is interesting for me to see from a different perspective as, you know, people are just buying Monte Cristo because we have the mark. They had the market share or they had the shelf space or they had negotiated whatever, you know. So it'll be interesting to be part of what this evolves into. And yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. the biggest thing we try to do is obviously make our show feel like you're sitting in a cigar shop. Cause this is the type of shit that goes on when you're talking smoking. hundred percent. But that's pretty much on that side you of have, things. There. Am I the only woman you've had on this show? No, no. we had, um, Mame Kendall what? for, uh, with, uh, oh, Travis Pepper. from, from Altidus. Yep. So actually, yes, she uh-huh. was here in studio. That was a great, yep. that was fun. And, uh, yep. we've had Leo from Nova cigars as well okay cool. um and then i bit like rachel but rachel was whiskey yeah so. rachel's whiskey she was a regular yeah. for a little while since you guys already kind of stalked my uh instagram and you know that i'm cigar bay because <laughs> you mentioned that on your show as well i thought um, you were just a cigar <laughs> influencer yeah no but oh. <laughs> just but just i mean yeah. they're also trying to spread the word but anyway um my whole thing is about uh, empowering women in the industry mm-hmm. and not sexualizing them and you know kind of you know being able to smoke a cigar the same cigar you're smoking i don't need a lancero i don't need a grape flavored cigar What's even though i'm Lanceros? smoking a vape. Like it's fine but don't you know it's more there's a lot a big a much bigger um demo of women um in smokers they smoke with their partners they smoke with you know and i it, they mean a no i 100 oh we also had platform. sisters of the leaf on that's oh, yeah yeah, yeah we had a local like little chapter i don't i think it's disbanded since two years ago <laughs> when we had them on but uh okay. I, think, I think they gave up on the dream i, I don't oh, know cool. <laughs> but so honestly yeah. you know i think you're spreading a good message for women in the industry and 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 honestly you know it's uh you know it, when you first get into the industry, I'm sure it's kind of intimidating. It's a very male domin- dominated uh, industry, and you know it, it's nice that you spread li- uh, you know put some light on to, uh, that women are also included in this. And you know it's yeah, not they a work scary in the cigar place. shops. Yeah, they you know there's so many. They're the ones that are hand rolling these cigars in the factories. I mean that's just well you know, remember like not generationally yeah, i forgot who it was they said but they, they only have women rollers because they can see the color differences yeah they can they can sort easier their fingers are more nimble um and their the attention to detail plus it's just gener just generational as well i mean you can go into tabla calera de garcia in dominican republic that's where um a lot of alta de cigars are made and it, i i think it's about 85 percent women and it's grandma mom and granddaughter you know coming up you know it's, it's you were born into a generation of cigar rollers you will die mm-hmm. in a generation they, of but they take and you no know, they really do take a lot of pride in that they really do and well I we appreciate you jennifer and appreciate i hope you have you. a good night and enjoy your holiday weekend thank you guys thanks so much no absolutely we'll bye have a good one you too have a good one all right fellas all right the the uh the rebuttal is uh, officially done. How'd you feel? Uh, she took it in stride. We said like she took receipts, bro. <laughs> like I casually I was like, what is this? Like marketing speak, like some Bud Light shit, and she remembered that. I forgot I said that. I was like, oh fuck, I said that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Caleb, we had a couple things to get to. Uh you want to get those rolling? All right. Now it's time for Patrol Gone Wild, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, makers of cigars such as Mikadilla, Sin Compromiso, Sober Mesa, and many others. Let's get into it. Patrol Gone Wild. We're doing it big. All right. Up first, uh, Gio, we're going to go with your story. We have the stolen car that crashed into a lake. Obviously a Florida story. But uh, let's get into it, Gio. What do you got for us? This was... I don't have this one. I, I thought the- you had a video. No, that wasn't me. You had this. Hold on, hold on. I made the clip. I thought you had the story. No, dude. I sent you the the different one. Well, it's a good thing we have three other ones, so that's always good. All right, we'll just skip that one then. I thought you had the whole story and the whole video. All right, well, oh, apparently shit. not. All nope. right, this up next, we have Mr. Postman, a.k.a. Hot Rod. He is a street racing post officer, 
uh, post man <laughs> driving over 105 miles per hour in his United States Postal Service van racing a Mustang. <laughs> this, again, is another uh, story. Not out of Florida, but it's awesome. I love it. It's out of Ohio. Just oh, wow. as crazy as Florida. Just as crazy. Uh, I was stopped doing over 100 in a 60 mile per hour zone. Uh, when pulled over by police, he said, I didn't realize I was going that fast. <laughs> this happened on uh, April 21st, right around 2 p.m. on Route 20 west of Fremont. <laughs> you know, just racing a Ford Mustang, you know, why not? Uh, he said the Mustang took off, caught his attention. He blew by him, and he didn't realize he was hitting 105. So, amazing. Driver is uh, Drew Brown. Uh, she's 28. So, female driver. Uh, got a $50 fine for a traffic violation and received a verbal warning as well for racing. It's not really that bad, honestly. Uh, I'm sure the United States Postal Service was like, yeah, well, obviously she was in a hurry to get the packages to where they needed to be. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a great excuse. Uh, they actually said she might have got hit with another fine from the post office. For two hundred forty dollars as well for like speeding while on the job. So three hundred and ten dollars to race a Mustang in a post office vehicle. I'd say that's awesome. a W. That's not bad. Like a post office van getting over one hundred five. That's that's pretty dope. Listen, they paid for next day shipping. She was fucking coming in the clutch there. <laughs> I mean, if you got your mail and that package is that day, you're happy. Nothing to complain about. I think this is hilarious. This is. That's a that's a win, man. I do that for free in the scat pack. <laughs> without, Here's the reality: delivering of it. packages. All right, would you ever even think to pull over a mail truck? Okay, Gio, we work the job. Uh, there are just some things. There's just some. I, I believe in courtesy, and okay. I, I listen. This is no not to say that some people can get away with things and some people can't, but like I wouldn't even look at a mail truck. I'd be like, yeah, the man obviously has places to be. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, what the fuck is this guy doing? This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> yo, I want to see where he's going. Let's follow him. <laughs> just doing his job. Yep. Just, that's it. Just the guy doing just I, the lady I, doing their job. I feel like that would be like a very Super Troopers-esque scene for me and you. Oh, yeah. Like, I got to see where this ends. It's going to end somewhere good. Uh, like, oh. Put, just pull up next to him. I got to ask. Was it an important package? <laughs> Probably was heart transplant. Of course, you got to say that. That's your go-to right there. I don't even think they. <laughs> I, I don't think that. USPS delivers <laughs> organs. Yeah, they probably do that by helicopter. Or they fly. They fly yeah, like in. Mercy Flight. Exactly. <laughs> well, I feel like they might trust UPS for that though. What can Brown do for you? Yeah. That's the commercial right there. It's the UPS man coming with the heart transplant. I like it. All right. Up next, crazy story. This one's out of Florida. We got a shirtless man is threatening Wendy's employees. Uh, to rob their restaurant because they took too long making his food. So we got a shirtless guy out of Avon Park, Florida. Uh, this is out of Highlands County. Uh, he had beef with the Wendy's joint because they were taking too long making his food at 11.30 p.m. Uh, this is again back in April, too. Uh, when, when authorities pulled up and his order wasn't ready, he said, oh, wait, I'm at the wrong restaurant. He wasn't even at the right place. He, he forgot he put an order in and it wasn't at Wendy's. But he showed up at the drive-thru, shirtless, tried to reach in, went around, came through the front door shirtless, held up finger guns, and was threatening to rob the place because his food was taking too long. All to just realize that when authorities came, he, was this, he didn't order food from Wendy's. He ordered from a totally different place. Clearly intoxicated. Well, that stands to the question, where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> we have the beef. Or that's what, what Arby's? We have the meat. The meat. Fucking Ving Rhames. Yeah. He clearly I'm confusing my fast food restaurants. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Arby's is disgusting. Caleb says he likes Arby's. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Arby's. Yeah, yeah he loves thing. the lippy uh, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh, don't go there. This guy clearly ignored the rule. No shirt, no service. Jumped on tables. Repeated threats with his finger guns. Dude, gotta have finger guns a blazing. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, suspect, suspect is being described as being about five foot five and weighing about two hundred pounds. So they didn't catch him. He fled the scene, too, as well. So They say if you're on the lookout for this guy, submit a tip to Crimestoppers.com. Ain't nobody submit no tip on this. <laughs> probably not. He's probably no, just the... Most people agree with this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they do be taking too long. long. <laughs> and they <laughs> fuck my shit up. <laughs> Except for he did order from the wrong restaurant. So, drunken mistake. Uh, anyone could have done this, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, 
I'm disappointed that you took the costume off and we're about to talk, talk about this next story. It was getting too hot in here. Our next story is a priest story, though. Should we play the hymn at least? Yeah, let's get yeah. a little hymn. Of course, the fucking hymn is broken. No. Everything's fucking broke. Is this whole hymn? goddamn system. No, what my computer does is it likes to put everything into fucking uh, into this like nonsense cloud. But here you go. I can play it. All right. Here. There we go. That's nice. That sounds nice for you guys. All right. Get the effect. Father Caleb. At least put the glasses on. Did you lose them again? No, I got This is Father Caleb off duty. Yeah. I'm at uh, vacation mode. You can tell by the shirt. Uh, palm he, trees. Clearly. He went to Florida for this story to report on it. Yes. Father, tell, tell us about this story. Another Florida story. A priest, unlike myself, bit a woman's hand during an altercation over the Holy Communion, officials say. This is out of St. Cloud, Florida at St. Thomas Aquinas Church, uh, where a priest bit a woman's hand during a physical altercation while he was administering communion to the congregants of his church. <laughs> yeah. So, can I, I have a direct quote from the priest. Go ahead. This is from the body cam footage. I bit her. I am not denying that. I was defending myself in the sacrament. <laughs> <laughs> That's a legitimate quote. It's a legitimate quote. It's Father, a- what do you think? I would never do that. To a member of my congregation, you herfers, I'm not going to be biting you. But just p- be prepared. Come orderly when you're receiving your Holy Communion from Father Caleb. Be prepared. <laughs> so you should have had the outfit out for this story, dude. I'm going to read the actual incident report. All right. <laughs> the incident happened at St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church around 1.20 p.m. local time. According to the charging affidavit... It, police said that the woman had attended mass to participate in her niece's communion, but when she had gone up to receive the bread, the priest allegedly refused to give it to her, claiming she hadn't completed the necessary steps to get it. However, the woman told the priest that she had done so and was now accepted by God, and the priest ga- became upset and tried to stuff the bread in her mouth, per the <laughs> affidavit. The woman then tried to grab another piece in his hand when he allegedly grabbed her and bit her arm, per the outlet. <laughs> He tried to forcefully shove it in her mouth. She backed up, one witness told police. She said, no, don't do that. And she tried to get it. And that is when he went crazy. He went crazy. <laughs> that That's the actual report. This is, <laughs> I'm reading the exact quotations. Uh, there was body cam footage of this. I really wish we would have found this. Father Caleb, what do, you, what do you think of this whole scenario? Would you, you, I know you wouldn't have done something like that, but can you at least, you know, how oh, would you have handled this situation? Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Final, final quote. From the uh, body cam here, from the priest. I'm not judging you. I'm asking you, did you confess after mass? If you did not confess, I can't give you communion. What do you think, Father? All right. Now, upon hearing all this, I think this father knew this young lady. And I bet he knew she was doing some unholy things. And she didn't confess to them at confession. I think they got some history. I'm going on that. They got history. He knows. I actually agree to this. Because there's no way. I've been to several, like, funerals. I've been to several, like, you know, church masses. And nobody ever checks to see where you made communion, if you really made the communion. You know, they're going to get up the holy wafers, as Father Caleb would say. Um, he definitely knew this lady did not make her communion. Well, he, he saw her out at the club. She was clubbing. He saw her. He, he was there spying. So the, <laughs> he knew. The priest's he knew. name is Father Fidel, which makes this even <laughs> hilarious. More than, so Father <laughs> Fidel apparently was accused of singling her out due to her sexuality and attire. Do you uh, think, um, oh. did he get charged with anything? Uh, or is that his right as the father of that church? Let's see here. Did they charge anything? I'm trying to figure out where there's no... Not yet. No charges yet. Oh, okay. It says authorities have not yet charged the priest with any crime. This is how you is know possible. the church is supreme. That's how you know. Even the police won't even charge the priest. And they say the uh, Diocese of Orlando will not be investigating any further. So it remains to be seen yeah. what they're going to do with this father. Um, but yeah, maybe he was on, you know, he caught... He was spying on this uh, lady, so he probably knew. Yeah, the knew state is uh, determining whether to charge Father Fidel with battery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is fucking hilarious. 
Uh, yeah, he did his research on this person. So he was like, I can't have this in my church. Not today. Not today. I know it's your niece's communion, but nah. You got to get right with God. Get right with the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. That's right. Best be right with your Jesus, boy. He was perhaps a bit judgmental, but, you know, he was on, he was on track for something. He spotted the devil. He spotted the demon, that's for sure. All right. That'll conclude our Patrol Gone Wild for this week. So tune in next week for another Patrol Gone Wild segment brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. And now it is time for News with Caleb. They're they're hurting my eyes. I'm getting a little scratchy here. All right, up next, uh, we have the Pledge of Allegiance is back for a second installment hitting stores in June. So yeah, a high-rating cigar. got our number, what, number two last year? Um, I it was think it might have been number three, four, or five. Hold on, I will quickly go to our lovely little reel that I made that is great for reference purposes like this. Yeah. But it's up there, it's back, it's coming back, uh, it's going to be out in early June. Uh, success of it last year, they are like, let's bring it back. Another 6x54 uh, box press Toro with a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, Ecuadorian grown Connecticut seed binder and filler from Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. Uh, it's going to be limited again. To 1776 individually numbered boxes of 10 cigars, pricing with uh, $22 per stick or $220 per box. So out of uh, Casa Carrillo in Santa... In Casa Carrillo. Casa Carrillo out of the Dominican Republic. So There you go. There we go. We got that. Looking forward to it. So you guys, big fans of the 4th of July, big fans of EPC, big fans of the Pledge of Allegiance, coming again. I love that cigar, so I'm looking forward to see what they put out this year. Yeah, Definitely it was buying. really good. But- I wonder, did they say they were changing the size? No, nope, nope. same size. Six by 54 box press, same thing. Okay, because I, I remember vaguely reading that there was like going to be a special edition size of it. But I don't know. Maybe I'm mixing this up with something different. Perhaps. Yeah. I've already moved on to the next story. <laughs> so up next, we have Davidoff. The year of collector's edition is going on sale. So, guys, I don't know if you're ready for this, but be prepared to spend a whopping... at the company's flagship store in Manhattan. You're going to get a box of 96 cigars with 12 main releases of the Zodiac series calendar from Davidoff. Uh, It's only going to be limited to 100 units of these boxes for the collection, and they're only going to be stored in their flagship stores of Geneva, Hong Kong, and New York City. So each box you're going to get, it's designed like a pagoda in Japan. Oh, no, in China, my bad. Uh, you're going to get 12 trays each with the uh, following releases. You're going to get the Year of the Snake, Horse, Sheep, Monkey, Rooster, Dog, Pig, Rat, Ox, Tiger, Rabbit, and Dragon. All stacked on top of each other in individual trays. So, yeah, 18800 bucks for this. Uh, it looks swanky. It looks fancy. I mean, um, it's really fucking cool. I just, yeah. I don't have eighteen grand, so, you know, I'm going to go fuck myself and be poor. Somebody's buying these. That's what's crazy. Oh, yeah, someone's going to buy them. Uh, yeah. Only 100 boxes of these. You know limited. who's buying that? Like fucking Conor McGregor. That People like that. Yeah. A bunch of Chinese billionaires will be on there. Some Wall Street guys for sure. Uh, a couple of rich Europeans out in Geneva. I just want to live like that for like a week where I can spend $18,000 on a single package of cigars. 18800 for 96 cigars. It's a lot of dough right there. What is that, like 220 a stick? How many cigars come in it? Ninety six. For uh, eighteen for eighteen eight. That's, that's absurd. A, yeah, it's a lot of money. Are How they, many cigars? Ninety six. Are they exclusive sizes? One hundred and ninety five dollars per cigar. Oh wow. That's that's ridiculous. Yep. Well, like I mean, good for Davidoff that they you know can demand. This is why fucking Gurkha hates you. <laughs> you know what's fucked up? That's the response. This covered all the legal bills for Kirk. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to fucking sue us? Yeah. Let me go make a fucking $18,000 cigar. Someone's going to be dumb enough to buy it. And there's our legal fees paid for. That's $1,800,000. Uh, 880000 It's ridiculous. Wow. All right. Well, and hey, you got, well, right, hold on. Not bad for a project. And the ones that are in Geneva are euros, so they're probably more. Yep. Yeah. That's- Good point. So, probably closer to two million. All right. Up next, uh, whiskey story of today's episode. We have Woodford Reserve is releasing a new distillery series, Toasted Bourbon. It's probably delicious. Yeah, I picked this one out just for you, GL, because I know you're a fan of Woodford. So, 
They just announced uh, a couple days ago that they're going to do their Toasted Bermud Limited Edition, uh, part of their distillery series. So um, they're going to toast these barrels and a uh, lightly toasted, heavy charred, double oaked barrels that are going to be heavily toasted and lightly charred, according to the press release. Uh, 18 barrels were filled. Um, Master distiller Elizabeth McCall had the idea to keep the barrels to see how long and how well the whiskey matured. Uh, It's from Historic Warehouse C where the flavor has been developed and monitored for more than six years. So obviously aged over six years here. So we're going to see how their rendition of Toasted Barrel turns out. Uh, price is going to be for, oh, they are only doing this in pint-sized bottles. So for a pint of this, it's going to be $65. I thought they were making seven fifties, but they're pints. Trying to spread the love. Everyone can try it. Well, it seems like it's going to be a test series. You test it out with a pint, see how it goes. Next year, next time you go, come out with the 750. So uh, the, uh, these are going to be released. Uh, actually, they just got released four days ago as of the press release. So I don't know if you're going to be able to get them. It says they're only available at Woodford Reserve Distillery out of Kentucky. Coming soon to select retailers. So Yeah, the Discord so, will be on fire. <laughs> it probably is already. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey Jerry, yeah. my birthday's coming up. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, 65 for a pint, guys. If you're willing to pay it, go give it a try. So was the babies. Hey, I, hey listen. Hey, I, you were a good. You're, hey, y'all, you're a good guy, bro. <laughs> you she can't. Uses, I was like, she uses her presence every day. <laughs> fucking, that was the greatest thing in the world. I'm so happy. We're gonna have a random dad vent moment here before we get into anything else. So Amazon registry for children's birthday party way easier. Oh, this is what they want. Perfect. Buy, buy, send. Don't even have to go to the fucking store. <laughs> Can we start doing that for our birthdays? Or is that just like you can't do that anymore? The, only for kids and... It's like the degenerate version. Yeah. Like, I would really like... I don't know. This, this, this pistol. <laughs> this cigars. specific box of cigars. These cigars, this whiskey. Just just keep it to the list. I'm just going to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> Go fund you know my, what? Go maybe, fund maybe my birthday. We'll yeah, right? Fucking... The peas in fund for Caleb... All right, uh, that concludes the news with Caleb. Caleb, let's get into the review of this cigar. We never even asked them if we could post this picture publicly. We should probably do that. Uh, no, no, we shouldn't. No, no. Uh, they gave it to us to review for the show, and that's what we do. Got to give the people a picture. Well, we no, a picture to go with we them. definitely can do it, because they literally were showing it on yeah, the fucking... Yeah, they Yeah. And it's a stock image. It's a stock image. Mm. All right, well, with that being said, let's get into this rating for the Detroit River by Concealed Carry. So, appearance... Given the stock image that was used and an image that we've we've seen, I'm giving it an eight and a half. Uh, it's black and white. It's not. It's the band there, so you know, good size cigar. Nothing wrong with it right there. Uh, burn. I'm giving it a nine. Didn't touch it up once. Just burn all the way through. Uh, construction. Giving it a nine as well. Had a little flakes. I did take Jerry's advice to heart at the beginning of the show when he said make sure you tap that ash because it gets flaky. Uh, draw. It went straight cut. I had no issues with the straight cut. Giving it a nine. Didn't bother me whatsoever at all. And enjoyment, we had Jen and Omar on, giving it a 9 as well. So that is a 44 and a half times that by 2, getting 89 from me. And uh, additional notes, uh, I had some hay on the cold draw. Uh, spicy notes too, especially in the beginning. And that last third, this thing got really peppery for me. It was like a pepper bomb towards the end. Uh, flavorful, smoked good, light ash, like I said, light flakes. But uh, good score with the 89 right there for me. A good smoke. Uh, it's, it's a lot more... Uh, full body than the 18th amendment because the 18th amendment was like a mellow chill easy going cigar this is that next level for you i actually completely agree to that uh my review of the cigar fratello detroit river uh part of the concealed carry line, line. brand brand yeah. line uh the appearance i gave it an 8.5 uh i like the band i think it's pretty cool um you know, it's a stock image, as Caleb mentioned. Uh, and Omar made it a point <laughs> to say. He made it. He definitely made it a point to make sure that if you type in <laughs> the word it. prohibition, that's the first thing that comes up. I was like, damn. It's a good point. It's, it is a good point. Uh, the burn, I gave it a 9.5. Uh, the thing burned really good. Uh, no issues, no touch-ups, no issues at all, really, with the cigar at all. Construction, I gave it an 8.5. Uh, I will say, if you do smoke the cigar, you do get your hands on it. Be very wary that the cigar ash is very light. So I did give it an 8.5 on that. Um, it will fall. Don't even test it. 
Don't try and play your, uh, let's see how long I can get the ash, because you're just going to ruin your outfit. That's all I'm going to say on it. Uh, the draw, I gave it a 9.5. Very smoky cigar, um, despite having the the filtration system we have in here. It did get very smoky. Obviously, it looks like the three of us have finished the cigar. It does smoke pretty fast. Would you agree to that? Yeah, it's definitely a uh, a quick burn. What do you think, Caleb? Yeah, I burned right through it. Took it down to the nub. Yeah, I, I burned right through mine. Uh, the enjoyment, I gave it a nine. It was nice to have Jennifer and Omar on the show to kind of clarify some things for everybody. You know, talk about the project and, you know, bring some light more so than, you know, the negativity that has been brought to the project. Um, obviously, it was nice to have them clarify that. Uh, I gave that a nine. Uh, bring me to a 45 overall, 90 overall on the cigar. I really like the cigar. Uh, I do believe that if you smoke the first one, the original 18th Amendment, um, it's going to be a stronger cigar, a lot more peppery. Especially um, that last third, pretty peppery. What do you think? Because I was like, this yeah, thing's got some spice. Yeah, it's got some spice to it. Um, I, I think Caleb was definitely spot on. There's definitely some kind of Habano in there. And I, I think that he was I right. say Habano, too. I think he was right because, like, if you noticed, Omar's like, well, what country? <laughs> what country, Habano? So I think you might have been on. But, I, I yeah, I, I think I think you're going to be surprised. And I wonder if they're actually going to put out the blunt. Like, that's something probably, I couldn't like, guess any, like, filler or anything like that, but rapper seemed like Habano, yeah. Uh, if Caleb got that right, <laughs> instant credibility. Yeah, right. He's going to be completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but I gave it a 90 yeah. overall. I think you guys should try it. If you get your hands on it, it's a pretty but good cigar. Here's the here's the fucked up thing. You know how Caleb, Caleb has like the random shit he's writer out? Like we talked about drunk history, and then he'll follow that up with like common knowledge fuck ups. Like he thought that, you know, Tripoli e was in the national anthem. That's funny. Uh, it's, yeah. it's part of a Marine Corps song, but yeah, not sure. It's like, like the what. Marine Corps like theme song or something. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. How'd you do? All right. I'll get into my review. The. Conceal Carry Detroit River. Uh, appearance, I gave it an 8.5. Uh, I did factor in. They did mention that it was going to be a very similar packaging to the 18th Amendment. Uh, you know, that I made the reference before. It looks definitely like something you'd see weed stored in. That's every time I think of it. Like, I think this is the first cigar I've ever seen packaged like this. Do you recall anything similar? Uh, so... I guess points on that. Um, the big uh, Detroit River Pour logo is going to be entertaining. I wonder if Skip's going to have another uh, comment, <laughs> to say the least. I would say probably. Oh, yeah. He's going to watch this episode, and we're going to get DM'd. Good. Yeah. I think it's great. I enjoy uh, our uh, conversations with Skip. Uh, Burn, I gave this thing a nine. Excuse me. No issues with that. Uh, I think I touched it up once because there was a small bit of boating. Uh, I enjoyed that other. wasn't a distraction to me at all, which that's kind of my criteria for burn. The longer I have to focus on it, the less or the less uh, high it scores. Construction, I gave it an 8.5. Uh, even with taking what you said, Jerry, with the flakiness, I still ended up with fucking flakes on my shirt, which is always annoying. I tried to pre-warn you guys. I took that to heart. I definitely was wary of my ashing. Yeah, like I mean, and it's not like it's terrible. It's not like I'm fucking got ash all over me, but just a little thing that I noticed there. Uh, I do wonder, like she said, if maybe like with like these being stored and like packaged not in the bundles that we got, it might be a little different feel for people. And after we have these sit in our humidors for a day or two, it might be easier to revisit that part of things. Uh, draw. I gave it a 9.5. I did the punch. This thing... Punch has, I think, become my favorite cut. Uh, obviously, I am limited to only certain cigar types with that punch, but for this one, it worked out here. Um, got appropriate smoke output, and I enjoyed that part of it. Enjoyment? I gave this thing a 9.5. Uh, this was a fun little conversation. You didn't really know how this was going to go here. Like, we're, you know... Obviously, they thought that we kind of bullied them a little bit, and we definitely did not uh, shy away from our opinions, but I like that the approach they took is like, hey, we're going to come and talk to you about it, and I respect the hell out of it. You know, Jen took it in uh, good spirits and then threw some shade right back. It was pretty funny. Uh, 
fun episode for me, but that brought my total to a 45, also giving me a 90. All right, Caleb, how did we do? All right, this should be easy. Let me just like do the quick math. We got an 89, a 90, and a 90. What do we got? Let me divide that by three. 89.66. We'll round up to a 90. Perfect. Perfect. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Everything was doing, was doing the horns there. Everything's off, or you know. All right, 90 overall. Not we'll, bad. For we'll a, fix it. Not bad for a second uh, rendition of the uh, Concealed Carry by uh, Fratello and Concealed Carry as well. So not, not bad. That being said, Caleb, any closing notes to the episode? Guys, make sure you're following, as always, on the YouTube. Watch those new episodes that we have coming out. You know, I know they're long. Just watch them. They're fun. Always full of laughs. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, comment. We always love the funny comments. We got the Instagram as well. Don't forget about that. Stay engaged. We got the Facebook too, the TikTok. And for those of you who haven't joined our Patreon, we have the After Her Show on our Patreon channel. Make sure you're joining up there. Always good fun, exclusive content, and our monthly herfs for you Mega Herf members. It's good fun. You're going to want to join. You see the wild side of us, the even wilder side. So join. And that being said, if you're listening to the Down Herf podcast, make sure you're checking that out on a, uh, a Cigar Hustler podcast network, the number one cigar network on Podbean. Um, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate all the listeners. You know, keep subscribing, keep hanging out with us, keep watching the shows, and please leave some comments, man. You Clearly, know. everyone sees them. You, you guys heard that here. So, but, but we take your comments to heart. <laughs> We do love the comments. And unless you're talking shit, then we'll just tell you to fuck off like the one guy. <laughs> what was that guy's Dave? He's gone. Nah, Dave. don't even bring it up. Yeah, David. <laughs> goodbye, David. We don't care about you. Uh, thanks again uh, to Jennifer and Omar for popping on. I mean, obviously, they took time out of their Saturday night. Omar's partying it up in Puerto Rico right now. I'm jealous. But uh, guys, let us know what you think here. We've, ho- we've got some more guests lined up for you in the future. And keep tuning in. That being said, guys, we'll see you next Wednesday, and enjoy your week.